Hell yeah, brother! Some awesome, like, cyberpunky music to come in with for our stream of Surviving the Aftermath. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here. Welcome back, and let me be the first, hopefully, to welcome you to your weekend. I know some of you might be busy or work or have stuff going on, but it's the weekend, and that's always a good sign for a good time to game, which, of course, spoiler alert, any time is a good time to game. Good to see you all back. Thanks again for smashing the like button. Thank you very much for subscribing. Welcome aboard to each and every one of you. Thanks Everything for your support. Is gone. Uh oh, I forgot one thing about this game. Hold on. We've become drifters, roaming wait, the wasteland. Wait, let's see. Scouring the wreckage for something to oh, hold yeah. on to. Searching for someone to light the way. For me, for whatever reason, still. I have a weird problem with the background in this game. For the intro and the splash screen, it like flickers in and out. I've tried to fix it a few times. I have no idea why it does this. And everybody I talk to doesn't have this problem. And I've only seen one person talk about it. Something to do with V-Sync. And I've goofed around with that. I have no idea. So it's it's just a just me issue. I've never seen anybody else have this issue. Anyway, Rick, thanks for the two. Welcome back, everybody, to Surviving the Aftermath. We're also playing this with the DLC, which is known as, uh, boom, over there, the New Alliances DLC. One thing I've never done in this game, though, is... Um, so we, we played this game previously uh, after the DLC came out. I, I did a video on it, like a sponsored video, and that was really cool. And then we did a live stream on it because, like, it was really cool, so I wanted to play it more. One thing I've never done, though, is uh, I have not gone into play this on, like, hard. Usually we play on easy just to, like, get through the game as quickly as possible to see usually new content, new updates, DLCs, other things that they've added... And typically that's like mid-game or late-game or something like that. But we've never really played this on like a, a hard difficulty. I don't know if we'll play this on the most brutal settings or if we should just set it a little harder. Um, I feel like in these types of games, even though this is a fictional game on something, you know, that like it's not based on like real life. You know, like it's not completely accurate. It's a game after all. I always try to go for what I would feel is like some sort of a realism whenever I play these games. Like I don't... I hope that the game is not too tedious, but I also want some challenge. Um, and that goes for all games. But there's good things, you know, some games are challenging like Elden Ring, but it's kind of built into the game. As for surviving the aftermath, like once everybody's died to death, you can't just like, you know, undo it or whatnot. So you've not seen this game before. This game is great, except for the splash screen for me. But um, anyway, in order to save you guys some uh, irritation for the flickering, I'm just going to see if I can uh, get this screen out of here for now. Hopefully we'll, we'll start... Yeah, we'll, we'll start here. That'll minimize the impact a little bit. Uh, somebody wants me to play with the seed 51388. Oh, really? Well, yeah. Oh, do you guys have some? Oh, that's right. You can share seeds in this game, too. If you get a certain map set up or something, you can share with a friend. The game has some scenarios. Actually, I don't know if there's more than just the two that I've seen. Yeah, gold or cold rush, which is like you have to. It's like Frostpunk. You have to survive a brutal, uh, increasingly brutal storm, except you do have to escape on a train. So there's a little bit of frostpunkiness to it, but it's more like a, hey, get out of there. Oh, I can't wait to play Frostpunk again, too. And then there's Eternal Winter, which is a permanent... Um, it's a permanent uh, winter storm, but you just have to finish the main quest. It's essentially like playing the base game, except it's a continuous winter storm. So instead of seasons, it's just permanent storms while you also do the main quest stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like sandbox gameplay. Uh, classic Surviving the Aftermath sandbox with the added challenge of a, pan, a permanent winter storm. Play co uh, close attention to fire, wood reserves, vegetable-based food sources, and energy production to survive. Now, this is more like Frostpunk, I would say. But both are good. I'm glad that they added these, and I can't wait for them to add more. Like, I really think that Anno 1800... And uh, Surviving the Aftermath did a good job of adding scenarios. I think these are pretty cool because it's like, hey, we're going to give you really challenging, um, like, curveballs, but it's not going to last forever. So it's like by the time it gets too tedious and whatnot, it's over. It's like Frostpunk where it's like at a certain point, Frostpunk becomes so hectic, but it's over at a certain point, you know. And then you can always uh, go into Sandbox. But anyway, I think we'll do Eternal Winter some other time. I'd like to do that scenario. Also, we should probably... Um, Maybe one time we'll also complete the Cold Rush scenario, too. We've, we've taken a look at it, and we've gotten started with it, but I haven't ever beaten it, so we'll we'll definitely come back to do both of these. These seem like good options. So next time we play, we'll do Cold Rush, and we'll do Eternal Winter. But for now, let's go into the regular scenarios and start a new game under... Um, all the game you're liking... 
Oh, really? There's a custom game? What does that do? Oh, there's even more options. Oh, wow. That's cool. So custom game is like the base game just with many, many more options, which they give you a heck of a lot in the normal game, too, of choosing different backgrounds and stuff like that. That's cool. Death by old age. Oh, you can actually have it so people never die. Okay. That's your game. You do whatever you want. All on this leaving or not. That's cool. All right. Another mode we're going to have to do sometime soon. Rogue Enemy, thanks for the 12 months. Appreciate the support. Uh, scrap Mechanic videos are on the channel. You guys know, uh, as always, make sure after you subscribe, you can always check the channel to see what we played. And if you're wondering what we're going to play next, make sure you check the description for more on what we're going to do next. Schedules down below. Look at that. The moon has exploded, man. I will right, we'll start from the beginning then. Okay, so anyway, welcome everybody to Surviving the Aftermath. Today we're going to play on some of the hardest settings, or at least harder settings. We'll kind of see if we can mix and match. And we'll do our first uh, kind of playthrough of the 1.0 version. The normal game, but on much more higher difficulty. So this should be pretty challenging. Very tedious, very slow. So uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to go slow because we're going to see how difficult it truly can be. Prologue. Modern civilization is gone fell apart in a time when rivaling superpowers fought over power and ideology. Too focused on themselves, no one noticed what was coming until it was too late. Skies rained down fire as thousands of comets and massive objects plummeted, uh, plummeted pummeled, sorry, the inner solar system. On Earth, cities were leveled and replaced by vast wastelands. As nations vanished and the remaining factions waged decade-long decade wars over scraps until there were no armies left to command. Now... We're all that remains. Looking for a new home? For a way to start over in this age we call the aftermath. Wow. Uh, tutorial. You're entering a post-apocalyptic world where building a new beginning certainly has its challenges. The tutorial guides you to survive and thrive in the hostile environment. and helps you to learn basic gameplay interface and game concepts. Would you like to enable it? Uh, not this time. Challenge. In the post-apocalyptic world, dangers are everywhere, and every decision can be a matter of life and death. Everyone has felt the desperation and the longing to give up, but from now on we take control. We decide what our fate will be, and how challenging the road ahead is. Uh, let's see. One of the last twos. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Difficulty 75 or difficult uh, 45 or 75. Wow, that's a huge jump. That is a huge jump. Uh, let's go with uh, never-ending hardships or Armageddon for the daring. Surviving ongoing apocalypse or survival is unlikely. I like the ongoing apocalypse. Sounds more challenging. But I'm not exactly sure what makes these more difficult, though. Armageddon or difficult. I'm not sure what this is turning on and off to make it more challenging. Let's go for the harder one, though. Although I don't, I'm not sure what it's doing to make it harder. Catastrophes. Uh, catastrophes are... Maybe that's like a main quest or something? Uh, are still sweeping across the continents. Extreme weather conditions and natural disasters have become a part of everyday life. Is this as good as it gets, or should we push deeper into the wasteland? Uh, disasters are the new normal, constant catastrophes. Push forward, the apocalypse never ends. Frequent catastrophes. I think we usually go with one, and they still feel pretty common. Ninety or a hundred percent. Um, catastrophes are kind of annoying. Frequent or constant? It's only a difference of ten percent. Let's try the hardest one. Environment. Destruction of unimaginable scale has, can be seen throughout the planet. Nature's delicate cycle was broken as the bombardment of different catastrophes never stopped. Once lush areas turned to dry, irradiated dust bowls that now cover the scarred land. It is the same everywhere we've been. Uh, the land is dead. Inhospitable barren soil. The planet has, is a barren waste. These always seem the same. They're like synonyms. The planet is a barren wasteland. Land is mostly barren and dry. 
The land is dead, inhospitable, barren soil. I don't know if there's a way we can actually irrigate in this game, is there? I don't remember sprinklers or irrigation ditches or anything to actually create hospitable soil. We'll go for the harder one, though. I don't, I don't know if there's a way to actually fix that. Uh, let's see. Survivors. Scouring resources from the wasteland has become more difficult and dangerous as the years passed. What is left is usually contaminated or just broken. We've managed uh, through a combination of survival skills and luck. There have been en encounters with other survivor groups as well. Uh, this is just number of them. Oh, and starting resources. Insufficient starting resources and barely any survivors. Close family is all you need. We'll start with that one. Ideology. All right, this one's not about difficulty. This is more about which uh, tech tree you go down. Uh, in the wasteland, there's no right or wrong. The only thing that matters is survival. Everyone who's come this far has done or seen something they don't want to talk about, but this is not the way to build a better future. Let's leave the past behind and choose our way forward. Uh, basic survival skills, progress in technology, take care and protect people. Oh, man. Well, survival and efficiency seems like your your number one of like food and water and stuff, but immediately right after that is like health. Health and safety are like really important too. Food is number one, but a very close second is like making sure we've got those medical tents up. However, since we're dealing with a, sh a smaller amount of uh, survivors, we might be able to get away with um, putting that off for just a little bit. So let's go with... Uh, Basic survival skills. All right, specialists. Oh, do we get any DLC specialists? Uh, I don't see any. All right, I certainly want a fighter for sure. Strappa or Fritz. I definitely want Raj. We want to skip. Oh, we only get two. Uh, boy, a fighter and a uh, scrapper might be good to start with to get us supplies ASAP. Scientists are good too, but uh, go for the highest health. Uh, fighters usually have a hundred. Yeah, fighters have a hundred. I don't think there's much difference between these though. Like, a fighter just has fighter, uh, skills. Oh, we should get a scout? Okay. Yeah, scout might be good, too. Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. I think we should go with scouts and scavengers. Let's go with Boone, because Tucker, Tucker had emote in the chat chat for our scout, Tucker. It says Boone, but they misspelled Tucker. And then also, let's get a scavenger Raj. Raj will be good. Dr. Robotnik over here. Okay, let's go with those two. Ah, yes. We have to put in the old faithful Raptoria colors. Oh, yeah. Should we? I think we should. Old Raptoria. Yeah, Raptoria flags in the chat. Woo! Raptoria, baby. What's up, Stingray? Good to see you, Jeanette. Susie, good to see you as well. Welcome back, everybody. Billy, John, Daniel, Alloy, good to see you as always. Patrick, hello. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Raptorians. What's up, uh, Commando? Oh, I love that. C. Oh, I thought it was C-M-D-A-N-O. Oh, I thought you meant like, com like the command like prompt. Damn. Sorry. But Circle 7 to you as well, dude. Hermano, thanks for the 20. Loving the content. Hope you're doing well. I am well. I hope you're well too. Well, it's the weekend, so. And by the way, as a uh, little FYI on the side too, guys, um, Monday, my internet is going to be down because the my internet provider is going to be updating the network. So Monday, I might not be here streaming. There'll be a video on Monday, but since it'll my internet might be up and down, it's going to be impossible to live stream. So if I'm not here Monday, you'll know why. Love the content, Reptar. Hope you are doing well. Thank you, brother. Patrick, thank you very much for the three as well. I think we'll go with these colors then. Let's 
move on to our uh, logo and stuff now. Your group is now ready to settle down and unite under a new flag in the colony named... And then we're going to name our name. Go ahead and call this... Uh, let, we, we usually go with either like New Raptoria, Fort Raptoria, or just Raptoria. Or Raptoria Prime sometimes. I think Fort Raptoria is a good one for this one though. Because I think we're going to be attacked a lot. So, or we could call it New Fort Raptoria. Yeah, let's go with that one. Not to be confused with Buford. <laughs> Buford and Raptoria. Okay, Colony Motto. Uh, eastbound. I don't think Eastbound and Down load... Amen, aim brother? Should I? I don't know what we should go with. Uh, rip, rip and dip. Oh wait, I shouldn't. Maybe I shouldn't use the word rip. That might. Okay, maybe maybe we better not go with that one. <laughs> maybe maybe we better not go with rip. Um, ooh, that could be bad. That could be bad. It's not a Wendy's. Oh, right, Wendy's is where the heart is, bro. Wendy's always lives in here. Keep on trucking. All right, let's go with keep on trucking. Let's go with keep on trucking. Amen, brother. Keep on trucking. Yeah. All right. Let's keep on trucking. All right. So we're playing with 200% difficulty. I'm not sure if this is the highest difficulty, but it's certainly the highest difficulty I've ever played as. I think, I think we've set everything to the highest. If not, we're pretty damn close. Edit map seed. Oh. If you guys want to play on my seed, I'm going to roll the dice a few times. Let it roll, baby. We're playing on seed. Oh, 200% is max for normal? Okay. So, wow, so in custom game, you can make it even harder? Oh, wow, that's just brutal. Yeah, you could turn off things like uh, maybe random events. Random events are good because they could help you. I don't know. All right, well, we'll play hardest on normal. This is like my first. I think we've done it once before during the uh, beta, but. The beta was hard, too, because the game was still being, like, balanced and worked on, so... Alright, um, can you put Raptor into the seed? I think it only takes numbers. But anyway, my seed this time will be 513037841-33330. Three, 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 Let's go. Welcome. A new member. Yeah, Jerry, thanks for the 12 months, Jerry Young, for the uh, one year of support, dude. Appreciate all your guys' uh, member bombs. Appreciate all your likes. Appreciate everybody tuning in and saying hi. Thank you very much for making an amazing community. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for hanging out. Let's begin. Hardest playthrough yet of surviving the aftermath. Y'all ready? Three, two, one. Let's go. The seed is also tied to the difficulty. Oh, really? Okay, interesting. So that seed will put you into the highest difficulty as well. Oh, that makes sense, because, yeah, we did choose to have more barren soil, inhospitable barren soil. Actually, I remember during the beta days of this game, there used to be, you would have a starting point where there'd be, like, a broken down truck or, like, an abandoned bunker or something like that. So there was, like, your, set, your starting would be different based on that. What's up, Rob Carr? All right, let's pause and take a look around a little bit. All right, well, this is going to be nice to defend. We've got just like one little land bridge, very narrow land. So if we get attacked, that's a pretty good spot. Wow, I've never seen so much barren land. Wow. Shouldn't use the word bear. All right, well, this is going to be rough and tumble. Nature is healing, though. Not seeing too much pollution around. A little bit, but. Oh man, that's gonna be hard as hell. Hermano, welcome aboard as a raptor egg. Thanks for smack and join. Appreciate that. Whew. All right. The world is in ruins. Things once considered mundane are hard to find. New member, welcome. And habitable land is no exception. A settler has finally found a spot for a new colony. With a place to call home, it is time for a new beginning. Welcome to the aftermath, survivor. All right, build the campsite to mark the center of the new colony and start uncovering the surrounding area. 
Right, I better th I think we better not build at all in the grass because that's probably the only place where we can grow trees, trap food, and uh, possibly farm. Is there a lot more to this game? Uh, they've updated it quite a bit. Yeah, there, it's gotten its first DLC uh, just about a month ago. So there was a lot to the game to start with. Now the uh, new DLC adds for a lot more trading and like you can make alliances with other camps. Essentially, it's like there's other survivors out there like us that are building a camp right now too. And we can kind of ally with them. And some of them are like how it is in Mad Max. You have like Gas Town or like the Bullet Farm. And in this game, it's more like Blacksmith Town or Farming Town or Medical Town or whatever. And you can trade stuff that you have an abundance of for stuff you really, really need. So, okay. Well, let's begin. All right, so we're going to build our camp. Um, better not build anywhere on the grass. I think we'll plop it down over here. Um, yeah, it looks like there's some room to build over here. I'm going to save some room for like a fishing hut and some other stuff. Or can I build roads to start with? Nope, just the campsite. I think we'll build right about here. Cool. And we can build some houses and things like that later on. Cool. It begins. We're going to have to play on slow speed because at this difficulty, if we miss something, we're dead. There are survivors waiting for a signal from the settler. They are cold and hungry, yet willing to work should the colony take care of them in return. They can be invited in right away or later in case the settlement needs more time to prepare. All right, so I think we'll uh, go ahead and continue preparing for just a little bit. How am I? I'm good, chat. Thanks for asking. All right, we should probably plop down an emergency shelter for our growing colony. Eventually it'll grow. Cool. Alright, the builder should start constructing that. Oh no, we can do the layout though. We can do the layout, that'll save us time. Um, build a water collector. Ooh, that's tucked in there nicely. Hold off on that one. It's a shame this game wasn't done the same way Surviving Mars was done. Um, I think it's good that both of the games are pretty different since one's all about colonizing Mars in the future and the other's kind of like post-apocalyptic. I, I do like the fact, though, that they're like, interestingly enough, both very different survival games yet the same, too. Like... Both games you gotta farm, both games you gotta build housing, and people come in and you gotta take care of everybody, and disasters can happen, but they're very different. I like that. New member, welcome. Uh, Johnny Joe, thank you for the three months. Uh, it says, uh, only 180 likes, come on guys, uh, thumbs up the stream. Well, thanks guys, yeah, for the support, appreciate that. Raptoria loves your support. Uh, let's build... Oh, yeah, a stockpile over here would be nice. Oh, a little too close to the gate, though. 
That's right. I like building the stockpile near the uh, gate. But we'll build it over here. Alright, we'll build a little uh, stockpile there, and then food storage can go here. Shelter for the food. Cool. Alright, so we got uh, some basic food, water, storage for those items. Basic shelter. We'll have to do an outhouse too, won't we? Well, at least we have a couple of lakes here, a couple of sources for water. Hmm. Let's see. We'll put uh, boy outhouses. I don't want them to be too far nor too close. Yeah, maybe I'll put the uh, cleaning area here. I feel like the outhouse is also like part shower. There's like a fresh water thing set up to it. We'll put that there. Medical tent next to it. Put these on pause. Want everything close together so the walking doesn't have to be very far. Okay, and then let's do... Let's see. Burial pit, but we'll do that later. Well, I guess we can plan to where to put it. Ooh. Wow, that is rough. Yeah, this, uh, all live streams eventually become videos on the channel once they're over. So you guys can watch uh, hundreds of hours of games if you want to know if they're worth it before you buy it. There's no better way to actually see, like, hours worth of gameplay. It's a lot to watch, but, uh, you know, you get kind of an unfiltered way to kind of form your own opinion by just watching the gameplay. Most of the games that I play on the channel I do like, obviously, because I'm in, uh, playing them myself, so... Let's see. Put a burial thingy over here, maybe. Oh, they'll let me build it there. Hmm. Layout's going to be incredibly important here at this difficulty. Can we build it? Yes, we can, yeah. Well, not everything has to be connected via a road, so maybe we'll build over here. You like Donna Man? Could you imagine if Donna Man made a, uh, like a post-apocalyptic survival game as well? I think what's really interesting about Donna Man, though, is that it's like, it takes place over thousands of years and not just like, uh, not just like over the course of, um, what could be days or years, it's thousands of years, you know, like entire, like, periods of time. It's pretty cool. Alright, we got plastic up here, plastic over here. Where do we have steel? Concrete there. Could be some close, we just gotta explore a bit. Looks like there's a little town over there, too. Oh, if we built the recycler here, that would be in a perfect spot for uh, being able to recycle from three things. Gonna build that there. Oh, and berry bushes around as well. Have I ever done a top ten game list? I think I should start doing that. I, I would love to do that because, uh, honestly, on the channel, I feel like one thing I want to start doing is not just showing, you know, like first look gameplay on a demo or like a day one launch or just the live streams but also news on upcoming games and I feel like if I was to do a top 10 upcoming games brief briefing or breakdown it could definitely get you guys interested in like adding a few things that you like to your wish list on Steam and then you know when the time comes where it's available you could choose to you know buy it day one or wait or 
take it off your list if things don't work out. But I think a top 10 list would be a great way of like showcasing everything upcoming in just an easy thing. And then um, maybe doing like tra trailer breakdowns are always good too because you guys always ask me like what I think of a game or what can you do in a game. A lot of times you guys are always asking more details. You know, like, oh, does this game have content to, uh, combat? Does this game have multiplayer as a co-op? But I think like not only, you know, I don't want to just put up just trailer because, you know, a trailer gets me excited. But if I'm going to show a trailer, I also kind of want to talk about what I like about a, a game or what I'm excited for. And, you know, I always feel like for myself, hype is always high. But I always have my own expectations where I know the hype is not ever going to meet, you know, expectations or whatnot. But it's always cool to, like, dream where the or to know where, like, the next game will be based on the games that are available now or coming up next. All right, I think we put down all the buildings we wanted. So I think we are good to go, so let's fire off that flare. Unless, wait, will this guy construct anything? Let's see. Okay, so just those get constructed. Anything else? Let's see. So these all need people. We'll put that on hold. Everything else will be needed. Oh, wow, we even get a... Wow, we get the burial pit for free? Or no, no. It takes a bit of wood. Are there any modern life simulation games out there? Yeah, there's quite a few on the channel. Check out uh, Bartender Hustle, Metro Life Hustle. Um, we'll be playing a game later today called uh, Arcade Paradise, which we're going to manage our own arcade in the 90s, which kind of sounds boring, but it's actually like a conversion process of like going from a laundromat to building your own arcade, which... I think all of us can say at one point we all wanted to own like a pinball machine or some sort of arcade machine, so it'll be interesting. Lots of great sim games out there. Every game is kind of a simulator, like, you know, if you were the mayor of this town, you'd probably have things laid out on a map like this, so. All right, I think we're ready to bring in these survivors. Let's do it. Our survivors waiting. Let's go. People are waiting for a signal. There it goes. appreciate the reviews from someone who's snuck in a few hours of the game. Yeah, true. A lot of the times I like to do first looks just to kind of get my first impressions. Your but. first colonists have arrived. Prompted by the signal flare, the rest of the group arrives at the prepared campsite. Despite all the hardship ahead, it's time to rebuild and turn this hostile place into a home. Let's do it. One of the one of the worst problems to have though is that uh, too many games, not enough time. Even if you do it uh, full time like I do, there's still not always enough time. But you know, don't always take my opinion for everything. I like most games or really love the games that I play repeatedly. But some other people have some good valid criticisms of things that I might agree with that I didn't think of myself. You know, and then maybe they'll be like, they'll you know say something about a game, and I'll be like, oh yeah, I guess that is kind of a problem. But since I've uh, grown up with games since the time of the uh, you know Nintendo Super Nintendo I've just seen things improving over time in terms of like uh, our ability to give feedback to developers and stuff and I think that's one of the reasons why so many people are mad about the YouTube dislike button too is that when a game trailer would come out people would you know either be like super excited for something or they'll be like microtransactions the game download NFTs today three billion dislikes you know uh, people are usually pretty generally smart with uh, you know, when you read the YouTube comments, somebody will be like, wow, this looks great. And then you'll read the comments and some people will be like, hey, this looks cool, but it's not going to be multiplayer or something like that. Like, there's a lot of information to learn. Everybody, everything's a resource. So just make sure you, uh, you know, read all the Steam reviews and stuff before you buy anything. Even if you prefer Epic Game Store, which, by the way, you could use code Raptoria at checkout. Uh, but remember, always just read, uh, you know, reviews wherever. Wherever you got them. All right, let's get things started then. Everybody seems to be getting to work. So let's go for our berries. Go for our wood. Ooh, we can actually uh, request resources too. I didn't know that. Let's have our specialist gather some wood too. Oh, berries. Let's grab berries. Very important. And wood too. Perfect. Best hair, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot all about Dante's Inferno. Wasn't that that game made by a... Uh, isn't that a Romero game? 
I think so. Man, there were a lot of great games from the PS3 era that uh, I completely missed out on or just completely forgot about. That's why recently I also was playing Tomb Raider again on the channel. Uh, do you guys remember the Tomb Raider reboot from 2013 to 2015? And then I think the, the most recent of the main trilogy was like 2017. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Old but good. At some point people will say, oh dude, Red Dead Redemption 2? Oh, that game is so old. It's five years old. And it's like, bro, have you not heard of Grand Theft Auto and Skyrim? Oh, yeah, they're great games. Yeah, those are over 10 years old, almost. You know, it's like, yeah, old doesn't mean bad. But you know what's uh, you know what's good? General G just dropped a big old 5 bomb in the chat. Thank you very much, dude, for five gifted memberships for the community. Chat, if you haven't already turned on your allow button, make sure you do so someone in the chat can gift you a membership. You can use all those juicy emotes. Certainly not the berry emotes, though. Don't, don't use those ones. Those bears are scary. Don't do that, chat. We have guests. Why can't you behave? But seriously, gift bomb emotes in the chat and show General G some love. All right. Eight colonists are homeless. We got the house being built. We got food buildings being built. I think we're going to prioritize this building first, make that top priority. We need plastics, too. Plastics make it possible. Let's make sure we do that. You miss the old Max Payne games? Oh, true. You know, if you like Max Payne, I think uh, the most recent thing from that dev is a game called Control. And Control, I think, is from the same people who made uh, Max Payne. And so there's a lot of similarities there between it. But Max Payne was great. A dirty, gritty, really cool game. Lots of great games. I think a lot of games deserve like a... A lot of people might say cash grab or something because, you know, they re-release one of those games like that. And sometimes that's true for sure. But I think it's 50-50, too. On one hand, for some games, it's always good, too, because, like, people might not have access to those consoles anymore where it's, like, harder to get, like, a PS3 or some people might not want to buy a PS3 or go on eBay and look for certain things to get some old consoles or, you know, get an actual box set of an old PC game when you could just buy it for sometimes cheaper as, a, like, a digital copy or something to play it again. I know I did that recently with uh, Command & Conquer, Red Alert and stuff, and uh, you can go back and play all the... Command & Conquer and Command & Conquer Red Alert games, uh, you know, for a smaller price. It's EA, but, you know, it's also was more Westwood before it was EA, you know what I mean? But some, I feel like it's like 55% a good thing, and then 45 of it is kind of like, oh, I see what you're doing, company. On the other hand, we have Game Pass, where you can get like a billion games for free almost, so always cool. Yeah, lots of, lots of great impactful games out there that we forgot about. Oh yeah, Descent. I remember that one. Absolutely. We used to play Descent every morning in middle school on the uh, old... You guys remember the colored IMAX that were like blue, purple, orange, green, whatever other colors, red? All funny. All right. What do we got building here, Chief? Uh, let's build our scrapyard, or our recycler, so we can get the plastic we need now. That'll take 45 wood, so luckily we got the uh, people on gathering wood. So we're short on a little bit of plastic. And the first thing we'll build is the house. The so recycler is number one. And then we'll build the uh, emergency shelter. Gotta get that plastic going. Yeah, Mech Warrior games were phenomenal too, the old ones. Man, it sucks because I like played all the old games, then the new games came out, but I never got into the new ones. But you know, they're so much better. It's always good when new mechanics and like some it's amazing how good some games were, despite all the limitations of memory and like hard drive space and stuff like that. And then like, you know, technology improves and then they go to like reboot it or remake it or remaster it or something, and then it's just like mind blowingly good, but not a lot of people play it because it's not it, still not as popular, but still a phenomenal game. But hey, if a game's you know doesn't blow up, but you absolutely enjoyed it, still a good game. All right, we've almost got the recycler done. Quantum Break, I remember hearing that one. Yeah, the PC Mac that was like the all-in-one like monitor 
It was like the monitor, but also had like the uh, internal parts in it as well and had the little CD drive on it. And that weird, you guys remember that weird hockey puck mouse? What were they thinking? Oh boy. Nap it on the job, Carl. Why are there so many icons on their heads? They need a house. We're working on uh, gathering some of the materials to build a house. We're going to build a recycler over here. It just takes some wood. So they're delivering wood, they'll build this, and then we'll have people getting plastic, which they need to make some of their homes. We're working on it. More wood is needed. Actually, we have 47, so yeah, it just needs to be delivered. Which, somebody's coming over now? Perfect. Yeah, since we're playing on such a high, high difficulty, we're going to have to uh, be real, real slow. So probably at no time should I hit that fast forward button. Always got to be monitoring, babysitting, double checking, triple checking. Oh boy. You leaned back and broke your chair? Oh no. Alright, let's see. And we get two free placements of tents. We'll put those down for our expansion for the wall or the uh, gate. How many people do we start with anyway? Eight? Okay, that's not bad. Only three people can be housed in those though. I think we're going to have to build one now. <coughs> uh, Michael, thank you very much for becoming a little raptor. Appreciate the support. Let's see. Certainly don't want to build over there. Eventually, we'll upgrade these houses, too. Build that there. And there. That's fine. Yo, Nathan, thanks for the two months as a little raptor. You're watching for your last day at uh, that job. Can I get an amen in the chat for moving on to better things? Let's get some uh, Pinto blesses in the chat for uh, Nathan. Bigger and better things, brother. Amen. Oh, good. Now we got our, uh, yeah, our recyclers ready. Fantastic. Immediately put two people to work in there. And on to making some dirt roads. New member, welcome. Yeah. What's up? Why don't you go ahead and grab some more wood? There we go. Do you guys like these types of survival games? Do you guys end up often playing survival uh, city builders like Banished or Surviving the Aftermath or uh, End Zone, A World Apart, or like Patron or uh, Settlement Survivor and stuff like that? You guys, are you often playing these types of city builders like every day or is it like a maybe once every update or something like that or is it something you guys constantly play? What's the red misty stuff on the map? Oh, this is just strawberry jelly. Yeah, somebody... It's a big cleanup in aisle five. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a big... No, it's actually uh What the hell? Sandworms? Wait, that's a thing? Are you kidding me? I didn't know that. A massive mutated centipede which burrows underground to attack its victims. Well... 
That's great. Didn't know that was there. Oh, never mind. We're on Arrakis. I didn't realize that. Great. Great. Ah, uh, yes, pollution. It's basically a toxicity that we can clear. We can actually clear this and reclaim the land. We just gotta get it out of there. It's not a sand bear chat, okay? No bears in the game. They've been banned. Oh, Dyson's Fear Program. Oh, yeah, I, lo I love re resource games, too, where it's not... You're not building with money or anything like that. You're actually building with, like, resources. This is, you know, a game where you build with resources, too. But, yeah, games like Factorio, Dyson Sphere Program, or uh, Satisfactory are all about uh, building with resources, and that's awesome. Okay, so we're about ready to build the emergency shelter. We'll have homes for the remaining people and for people who move into the camp, and then we'll get on to building the other things we need. Feels good, man. Comment for the algorithm. Thank you, Shane. Appreciate that, man. Once in a while, in my opinion, the ja oh, the genre is a little stale. This and End Zone are so similar. A lot of the others are like banished. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you either get banished like or you get like post-apocalyptic games. That's true. You guys ever hear of a game uh, called Manor Lords? You ever hear of that game? I'm excited for Manor Lords. It's like Ostrieve, but it's like Foundation, but it's like Stronghold, but it's like Total War, but it's like Banished, but it's like its own thing, but it's like, oh my god, let me play it now. You guys like, uh, you guys like, uh, Manor Lords, you might want to, uh, keep watching the channel, because, uh, something happened, and, uh, I think you're going to want to check it out, but, uh, I can't tell you anymore, I, unfortunately, I'm just not able to. Oh yeah. Some a thing happened. That's right. Things and stuff. But that's all I can say. Legally. <laughs> Manor Lords is too good to be released. I certainly do like living in the hype of games for a while though. I really do like getting excited about games, and you should too. You know what I mean? You shouldn't look for the things in games that are always bad and always like yeah, I mean you should identify those things, but it shouldn't let you it shouldn't let you bum get bummed out by it. You know, it's like it's like really being excited to go to a ball game and you get really excited to go and you know you're you're rooting for your team and you know you get there and you're all dressed YouTuber, up and when is the Fortnite stream? And then you realize they're all out of hot dogs. Like you shouldn't be bummed out completely by that. You should remember it and be like, oh man, it sucked they didn't have any hot dogs. But the weather was great and I saw my friend there and it was a really good game, and, you know, I, jo I enjoyed the, the weather and the day and went out to eat afterwards. You know, just, you know, there's always going to be bad and the good and good and the bad, but always try to focus on that good, too, because the world needs more of that. So when it comes to gaming like that, sure, there's always something more we want in a game, more features, more replayability, more... Like, we, we don't want roadmaps, but we do. Like, we want games to be supported for a long time, but we don't want them to be in development forever. We don't want them to be a million dollars, but... We want them to feel like they're a million bucks, you know? That kind of thing. That's why we all still play Sonic 2 for the Sega Genesis. They've never made a better game. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but growing up, you know, it was like Sonic 2 and uh, Link to the Past were great for their own reasons. Sonic was like brain off, go fast, gotta go fast, gotta, gotta blow up machines and kill stuff. And then uh, Zelda was all about like, hmm, I have to talk to a man with red hair. Where have I seen a man with red hair? All right, cool. Well, now we've got some shelters up. This is good. Medical tents up. That's good. I don't think we need anybody in there for now. Oh, we got the burial tent. Uh, and we're going to hold off on that for a little bit. Oh, we're building the fishing pier next, so that'll help with food. In this game, too, by the way, nutrition is incredibly important, so uh, you can't just feed your people berries or just fish or whatever. You gotta do a little little bit of this, a little bit of that. Alright, how about research? Can we see our research tree? Yeah! Survival skills. Production speed plus 25% for fish and venison. Skinning, hunting crew, basic farming. Okay, that's cool. Need some research points, but yeah, good to see it. Uh, I just realized two days ago someone gifted me a membership. Thank you so much. It, tru it truly is a great community. Absolutely, Catherine. Welcome aboard. 
Spam those emotes. You guys should feel welcome. If you're if you're a member, feel more than welcome to put a bear in the chat or a hi or a gift bomb or a pinto blast. Feel welcome to do so. Min402, thanks for the 13 months as a raptor egg. Thank you very much for your support. You just finished a Tomb Raider game completely made by one person. Tons of issues, quality of life, but every dungeon was fun. Oh, I get it. Tomb Raider game, like a dungeon crawler. <laughs> I was like, wait, we right. made a single person Tomb Raider? All right, we got to get some more wood here. Do we have any more? Here's some. Yeah. Specialists are so good in your camp in this game. And surviving the aftermath, Welcome. the specialists are so important because they can do pretty much everything. At least in terms of, like, defending the camp and, like, supplying the camp. They're great. Are we getting no extra water? Eight out of eight. Okay. I thought the, uh... I thought this thing made ten. Oh, is it because there's only one person there? High efficiency check mark. Oh, okay, so we got to make sure we build it in a high efficiency area. That's fine. Where we built it's okay. At least it's close to the camp. What's up, George? How you doing? They need to make a Days Gone too. Oh yeah, I agree. All right, looks like we got the. Uh, Fishing pier going up. Good. Cobbler, you made it to a live stream. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm a new sub. I love the Anno 1800 series. Awesome, Shane. Anno 1800 is a lot of fun. You guys think we should do another uh, members live stream of that where we invite all of our members to join us? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, that only gets four? We definitely want to go for water. Thingies. What we need is an AoE MMORPG mixed with Sapiens. Oh, yeah. I got early access to Sapiens, too. I can't wait to show you guys. I'm not allowed to show it yet, but it's going to be fun. You got one for Red Viking while watching me? Oh, good. That's awesome. And Patrick, thanks for the five bomb in the chat as well. Chat, enjoy your new gifted memberships. Thank you very much, Patrick. If you got one of those from Patrick, make sure you say thank you. Awesome. Oh, and I guess I owe chat. Thank you very much, everybody, for all the gift bombs and for hanging out today. Hope you're all enjoying the stream. Uh, I think we should build one down here, too. It's not overly expensive, but it is kind of expensive in terms of personnel. There we go. That'll be fine. All right, so we'll get some more water cooking. Then to build the gate, we're going to need... ...175 plastic, 190 wood. I need to build a few other things at the moment. A lumber yard. We really want a forestry building. Uh, it might be better to do logging here and crap in there, maybe. Uh, Raptor, did you get the closed beta for Arcade Paradise? Yep. I am going to be in on that one a little bit later, Ashley. It's going to be awesome. I'm glad I'm glad you've been having a good time with it, because uh, I really like the concept of that type of game. Own and operate your own business. Really fun. Honestly, I feel like a lot of the um, simulator games that we've been playing, or that have been popular over the last couple of years, like... House Flipper, House Flipper, and all these like mechanic type games are also stuff I'd like to do in The Sims. Like I'd love to be able to own my own mechanic shop or something in The Sims, and like build my own. Um... The Sims focus is so much more on like people and like making a person and how they interact with other people, 
And that makes sense because it is a social game. But I really want more ways to own businesses and earn money and stuff in that in that game genre. Really feel like there's more potential for more. And considering that it's EA, you know they'd make a DLC out of everything. Something's off with the shelter. What's going on? Not everybody is equally skilled in the art of building. But one of the colonists seems extraordinarily bad at it. Uh-oh. His tent looks like it could collapse at any moment. As the poorly sewed tarps slowly rip apart, regardless, the colonists insist he knows what he's doing. Well, this is a dice roll. We could give him 12 plastic and end up with nothing happening, or... I think it's worth a try. We got plenty of plastic, anyway. We can spare 12. Against his wishes, some adjustments are made to the colonist's home. He seems displeased by the whole ordeal, but manages to mumble his thanks after the work is done. 20 happiness. Good. Good. Yeah, Paralives. Yeah, that other sim-like game. I'm hoping for more of them. Maybe we need a water storage. Uh, well, we need, well we're, we're making just as much water as we're consuming, so there's no extra to spare to go into storage. But that's why I'm going to build another water thing here shortly. Oh, we got a wounded. Somebody with an injury. Come on over, pal. We got you taken care of. And are we building this? Wow. Wow. Good. Excellent. So we got fishing going on. We got piers going on. We're making extra water now. We can store up to 800. No, 300. We'll build water storage. If a, if a drought hits or a pandemic hits, I think we end up using more water. So we better put that in storage. It begins. Boy, we haven't even been here like two days. Nuclear fallout. The horizon starts turning from blue to toxic green, and the air seems to burn your lungs. These are the first signs of impending danger. Intense radiation is a constant threat to colonists, buildings, and crops. Withering and dying turning, uh, during a nuclear fallout. New seeds cannot be planted before it's over. Severe cases of radiation sickness and thirst take their toll on everyone. Harvest crops on a field before they wither. Stockpile iodine pills to treat radiation sickness quickly. Build more medical facilities or assign more workers to existing ones to those who are in need. Well, we better build another uh, medical tent right away. I feel like we're going to have some Fs in the chat. Now remember, this is 200% difficulty, so, you know, if we survive this gonna be a miracle make sure we build this next top priority yeah, I don't want the extra water at the moment I want more hands-on construction Your orders. Uh, you guys gather us some wood if we can Shoot. have you ever tried xenonauts yeah I did Long ago. Have they ever remade Xenonauts from 94? XCOM and Xenonauts are great. They actually have a new uh, XCOM-like game, but it kind of works more like Hearts of Iron. I f we played it recently on the channel. I already forgot what the name of it was. But it was an ama it was a really cool live stream. I kind of wish I had done a video on it, too, because I feel like a lot of people on this channel specifically, uh, they see a, li a big old beefy live stream and they just don't watch because they're... Honestly, there is a lot of, uh, it's a, le oftentimes it's pretty, pretty lengthy for our live streams. And so I feel like a lot of people miss out on some pretty cool games they'd love. But I should also do some, uh, videos and, um, you know, for like trailers and things like that and telling people about the game. Yeah, that's right. Terra Invicta. That's the one. Welcome. Terra Invicta. Very cool. Xenonauts 2 is in development? Oh, that's going to be awesome. Wait, you mean X? Wait, I'm thinking... X yeah, XCOM and Xenonauts are both phenomenal. 
All right, looks like we got a couple people who are hungry, but we've got plenty of food. He's just got to go eat. Yeah, anybody can become a doctor. Yeah, they just they just need to help treat people, I guess. Well, I suppose since these people survived long enough, maybe everybody... If you're going to survive in this harsh landscape, everyone probably had to survive on, on their own for a while. So basic things like first aid and uh, how to splint a, a broken bone and stuff are skills that they have. They just probably needed to uh, learn the skill after a while. And of course, you know, if you broke a bone, it's much easier to have someone help you. Oh yeah, the uh, Terra Invicta demo wouldn't let you save, yeah. That was really cool though, I was happy to see that game. Has anyone watched the Resident Evil show on Netflix? Uh, I actually found out about that like a night or two ago. I was browsing Netflix, I didn't even know that was a thing. And then I was like, oh. And then I was like, oh. And I was like, oh. And I was like... And I fell asleep. But, I didn't watch the show yet, so I was just browsing. Always good to try a series, though. I mean, it could, could, could be good. Sometimes it's good to watch a show when it's, like, unintentionally bad, but you enjoy it, or... It's really bad when a, tr a show tries to be really, really good, or, like, tries to do something different, and they're just not... It's just not working. But I feel like Resident Evil always has had some good comedy to it. Even in, like, the games and stuff, there's always some funny moments. Even, even uh, Oftentimes in those games, uh, being um, unintentionally funny, like, we all know the, the Jill sandwich meme. You were almost a Jill sandwich, you know. But that's how bad 90s video game writing was. It was new. Like... Voice acting and stuff in video games, for the most part, was, like, new like that. Or at least in those types of games. I think some of the first games to have voice acting, though, that I can recall that were really big oh, impactful were, like, King's Quest games. The fishery has been damaged. What? Colonists is being berated and pushed around by their neighbors. The colonists are being berated and pushed around by their neighbors. Apparently they had fallen asleep while working at the fishery. A little campfire got out of control. Now the building's in danger of burning down with today's catch still inside. Uh, put out the fire. A small group is assigned to put out the fire. They managed to do so, but not before all the fish inside is, fish inside is burned to ash. Oh, that's okay. Oof. At least we saved the building. Alright, we need to get some more people assigned to other things. I'm gonna assign this person for now. I think we can still get more people gathering stuff until we need to switch to that. We still have pallets here. 61. Yep. Another 25 there. Probably some more up here. Maybe not. John Claude, thank you very much for the two. Dear Raptor, I've been watching you for three years. Well, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's because of you guys that new people have been able to find the channel over all the years, too. So every time you guys have liked or interacted in the chat or left a comment, more and more people have been able to find more and more great uh, games to play. And, of course, a great community to play with with our Discord, too, uh, because of you guys. So... All the thanks goes to you. But we all have a lot in common. We're all we're all gamers here. We all enjoy a game or two. All right, I hate to say it, but I think we should probably get ready to build the burial pit at some point. Soon. All right, let's repair. All right, building's order is to repair. Definitely need more plastic. We got everybody working at that place as much as they can. Yep, yep, yep. Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a show that was really bad, but really, really good. Yeah. And same with uh, Xena War Warrior Princess. And also, I think there was like a Hercules show, too. Some of those sci-fi shows were like... Remember, welcome. They weren't necessarily bad. They, they were just budget, but they were like great ideas. Game A lot of games are like that, too, where it's like... That's why Banished was so good. It's like, if you think about it... 
At a certain point, you run out of stuff to do in Banished relatively quickly. But that's after your 7,000th playthrough. But, you know, there's mods and stuff. But still, it was such a great idea. that it, That's what made it a good game. Steven Jones, thanks for becoming a Raptor Egg. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna be focused here, chat. It is complete fallout, absolute pandemonium. All right, we gotta get people working on uh, bringing in water. Oh, are these shut down because of the disaster? Oh, I didn't know that. All right, so water is going to be used up because of the disaster. Yes. The only way around that is for us to build a well. Which could get us the rest of the water we need. How may I help? Every disaster in this game now is going to be like when a massive storm hits in uh, Frostpunk. Looks like we can get five water over there. Ooh, six. Baby seven. Well, we're going to build it. New member, welcome. Six will bring the nose up on that water. Firefly was awesome. I can't believe they tried to cancel it. I know. They always try to cancel the good uh, the good shows. But that's why nowadays, that's why it's really important to definitely buy the games that you really like, too, and add it to your wish list as well on Steam. One of the good powers that we have, too, on Steam is um, if you guys are really interested in a game, make sure you absolutely add it to your wish list. And the wish list isn't just for you to, like, keep it as a remind me later to buy this type thing. It's more of a... It is that, but it, it more of it is when the game releases, it ends up on like the front page of Steam, and Steam's more likely to like promote the game. So recently, with the release of like Power Wash Simulator, which we played many times on the channel, even when it was like in demo and like a beta long ago, that game exploded. Everybody played it because so many people added it to their wish list and were able to find out about it. Just think about all the good and awesome games that you know and you've played of, or that you've heard of and, and played. Versus all the games that you probably don't know anything about and that are going to find like a year or two from now. Like somebody in the future. Guys, everybody in the chat say hi to the person who just found out about surviving the aftermath like a year and a half from now. Hello, person from 2023. Hello, and, and chat saying hi to you as well. Look at the chat, yes. Welcome to Surviving the Aftermath. Glad you just found out about this game today. Zane says hello. I say hello. Alloy is here. We're, we're all here. Welcome. Don't forget to uh, add it to your wish list and stuff. You know, you know, there's people in the future who are just, well, probably freaked out now that we knew that they're here. But uh, yeah, there's going to be tons of games that uh, all the time that people have never heard of that they find two, three. Years. It's probably somebody finding out about Anno 1800 today, and they're like calling into work. Yeah, I'm not feeling great. Um, I, I'm, uh, I think I'm having a. Uh, uh, yeah, I died. Bye. And then they just, you know. Just hang up the phone and immediately just get enamored into Anno 1800 for the next 10 days. That's awesome. That's awesome when somebody finds out about a game and they're like, Wow, this is so cool. Uh, where are there major attacks in your base? Yeah, you, your base can be attacked, uh, but we're just starting out. It's like literally we're four days in, so that doesn't happen for quite some time. Right now we're being attacked by Mother Earth and nuclear fallout, so that's great. So, um... Yeah, I think we're a little more worried about radiation sickness right now. And these tents are filling up. Uh, the name of this game is Surviving the Aftermath. It's uh, in the title. It's on Epic Game Store. It's on Steam. Probably some other places. We're also playing with the new... Uh, new Alliances DLC. It's called New Alliances. It allows you to, like go to war with other factions and other cities, or you can team up with them and, like, do more... There's more options for war and more options for trade. So you can cooperate with some nations or cities and then go to war with others. 
and options are good. How are we doing on water? Oh boy. Oh, we have the 800 storage now. We finished the storage, but a little too late. Damn. Hey, but we're going for 200% difficulty. I think usually we go for like 25 or 50. Uh, so this is like four times or more difficult than usual. We're not supposed to survive. We are pretty much probably going to die at some point here. Uh, but that's what I like about... You know what's really impressive? The two things that really blow my mind about city builder games... I don't know if you guys would... Do you guys consider uh, They Are Billions to be like a city builder? I kind of consider it to be one. I don't know if you guys do. But, like, it blows me away when people will play, like, They Are Billions or, like, um, uh, Age of Darkness, Final Stand. And they'll play on, like, 10,000% difficulty or whatever, whatever the high number is. And it'll be, like, or Frostpunk, and they'll play on the higher difficulties of Frostpunk. And then it'll be, like, um, it'll be a two-hour, like, speed run of, like, playing Frostpunk on 9,000% difficulty, no pause. And they don't even pause the game once, and they just click everywhere, and they just they just know what to do, and, like, they don't lose a single person, and they just get, like, the best ending ever. Those people are insane. If you... Do yourself a favor. After this stream, please don't leave now. I, I need your attention, please. I need it. I'm desperate. I'm hungry like a bear. No. Do as you like. But, seriously, do yourself a favor and look up, like, a a 900% difficulty run or whatever the numbers are for like they are billions and uh, Frostpunk and just watch somebody play that whole game not even pausing once they'll just be like hey guys I'm playing the uh, first uh, I'm doing the the vanilla uh, Frostpunk um, storyline 10,000% um, difficulty and it's like you know and you're looking at the screen and the dramatic music's playing and everything's freezing and it's it's like, okay, we at least have one coal, so we're doing really well. We're good. Have I played Frostpunk? I sure have. There's multiple uh, live streams and videos on the channel. I'm holding off on playing Frostpunk again until we're close to the release of Frostpunk 2. Frostpunk 2 has been announced, uh, so when we know that when that's coming out, when like we get close to the release date of that, we'll play Frostpunk again. We'll try to play through all the... Uh... Oh my god, we did it. Wow, we somehow survived. You're kidding me. Okay. Well, let's get the water going again. Wow. I can't believe it. We did it! You mentioned yesterday your brother's flying on a B-25 Mitchell. He sent me a picture and he's on the runway now. Wow, that's cool. Reporting is, your, is your brother like a... Like a vintage pilot for vintage planes or... And you like pay to go on a flight with a old World War II aircraft. That's awesome. All right. Anything else we can gather? I don't see any other wood. Yep. We're gonna have to start logging now. Yep. Well, let's get the food gathered while they're here. What's up, Luigi? Good to see you. Oh no. Uh, something. Wait, what's happening? Is this a fire? Or was this nuclear fallout that hurt it? How did it get damaged? Was there a asteroid? Was that there before? Did a meteorite just hit and blow up all the buildings? I don't know. Now I'm being paranoid. Anyway, uh... Before we repair all this stuff, I think we should work on the gate. Oh, pollution could explode? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. A deposit of radioactive pollution that might burst out toxic waste around it. Okay. That's great. At least we don't have to worry with the sandworm for now. Okay, let's build the gate and try to get this built. And then it'll at least help us a little bit. We can go out and gather food and stuff real quick and maybe more building materials. Which we're going to need. Alright, the well's coming up. That's good. Nice thing about the well is you don't need anybody to manage it. Like, there's no employees needed for it. Alright, how are we doing at the medical tents? Alright, we'll get somebody logging. Oh, God. Whoa, bro, bro, bro. 
Oh, this game is mean. Oh no. The porta potty's on fire. Not the old outhouse. Wow. Taco night. Now, don't you hate it when your outhouse explodes from orbital debris? Well. Yeah, I always think those are like satellites or something falling to Earth. Oh boy. Well, that's what happens when you put on 200% difficulty. can we do? We need more plastic, we need more wood. Man, our buildings are just like destroyed. Oh boy. Well, if the porta potty collapses, uh, the outhouse goes down, we'll be fine. We will rebuild. Well, so much for that. Yeah, it's a hard choice to make, because if you cluster buildings together, it increases efficiency for travel time and for fire protection and for um, lowering the amount of firewood you have to use for burners, but then it increases the uh, chance of multiple buildings being damaged. It's, it's a minefield. You just joined, so you assume all the pink on the ground is bears we've killed? Uh, yes. Yes, it's a very easy day one, this game. Wow, the pollution is, like, spreading to it. I, f I feel like it's getting closer. Looks like a creep from the Zerg. No, chat, there's no bears in the game. Okay. All right, I need some more people here. Always a good idea to have one person in the medical tent. Yeah, two out of two. There could be another group of people sick then. After all that debris. Yeah, okay, we're going to cut off the fishing for now. We'll go with berries from the specialists. Yeah, the red is just pollution. It's radiation, ground pollution, sewage, whatever you want. It's just a mix of all the bad things. It's a bad time, sad zone. Alright, so it looks like we have zero wood and zero plastic, but it's all going towards the wall. So the wood consumption of the wall is almost done, about 80 more. Um. Would I like to be friends on Steam? Yeah, I've uh, Steam's got a friend request limit, so if I hit a certain point, I won't be able to accept any more. I try to be a little choosy on the Steam friends, but if we ever do something where 
we're doing like a member event or something like that. I'll accept friend requests for that instance, and then I'll try to get everybody in for a game. But the best thing is, is if you ever need to chat with me or whatnot, definitely follow me on Twitter, exclamation point Twitter. If you don't have one, make one. And if you don't have an Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram as well if you make one. Exclamation point Instagram, exclamation point Twitter. You can also uh, send me a DM on Discord. And uh, for those of you who are game devs or mod makers or whatnot, want me to check something out, uh, feel more than welcome to... Uh, Send me an email or something on a project you may have planned or whatnot, and I'll take a look at it too. So, email's the best for business, otherwise, Instagram and Twitter are good too, or Discord. Lots of options for everybody to come say hi outside the streams. Well, yeah, the repair button at the bottom, yeah. Yeah, we played this a few times, we know the basics. Unfortunately, we don't have the materials for the repairs, so I'm gonna do the gate first. I'm going to try for it. Oh dear. I love the deer in this game. They're like... They're like part zebra. Man. If we could get a hunting tent up... Oh man. Yes. Actually, I think we can have our... Yeah, you can have your specialists also hunt the deer. Though there's still some food around. Lots of food around. Alright, more resources going towards the gate. Once the gate is built, we can then explore the overworld and more survivors will come in so things will get a little faster. You can either have people come in from outside the gate or you can, of course, have people uh, have children, too. A colonist has received a vision. Excuse me, ma'am? An older colonist speaks up, claiming to bear grave news. She is shaking and in clear dismay. I saw it. A bright wave of destruction. It'll hit tonight. Before people can ask for details, the colonist passes out in stress. Unclear how the news should be interpreted. Uh, prepare for fallout, fire, or meteor, or ignore warning. A bright wave of destruction. It will hit tonight. Well, I think she's referring to a meteor. Unfortunately, we don't have the materials for that, so... As yeah, she bears grave news, yeah. Why, why do they use the word bear all the time in all these games? Well, there is a reason to believe the deranged old-timer, but we just don't have the materials for it. Oh, that's fine. That'll buff out. That's fine. A meteor? What? Oh, if only we could have predicted that. Okay, so plastic's being used. We have 800 water stores, so all the surplus water is going into storage. That's great. Hmm? Alright, I want to get two people at the lumber mill, two people at the... Uh plastic thing and then we'll get this wall built. The wall also takes security too, like we need to get people on security. Yes. Yes. See, the specialists know what's up, they agree with me. <laughs> uh. Wings are in, lurk mode on. Oh, are you making like, um, are you uh, frying chicken wings? Making some fried wings or some baked wings. It's been a while, chat, since I've had wings on the grill. I've been meaning to do that for 4th of July, but I've been making, like, steaks and brats and burgers and a few other things. i got to do some chicken wings on the grill. Wings on the grill hit different. I also like drummies, but, uh, I don't know. Wings are just something. They just hit different. 
Super spicy wings, fries, and truffle mayo. Oh, Maurice, you better open up a restaurant at your house. Jeez. All right, there, there comes our loggers right now. Look at how strong these Raptorians are. Absolute champions. Now you're hungry? Oh, you were hungry beforehand. I know how chat works. Don't blame me for all those delicious nugget emotes and Wendy's emotes now. Come on. You got a grilled turkey like yesterday? Oh, that's one thing I miss about Renaissance festivals. Massive, like, uh, turkey legs and stuff you can have. Or the pickles that they give you for, like, the ones near me will just give you, like, a pickle the size of a cucumber. For, like, a crazy price, like, one dollar. And it's like, what? Why? How yeah, they've maxed out their strengths stats. All right, good. More of our Raptorians are delivering 135 and 133, 175, 190. Getting there. But I've never seen the sandworm before in this game. That's interesting. I'm glad we actually found him hiding out there. Look at how massive that thing is. Ew, I don't know if I'd want to eat that thing. Kill it, eat it. Maybe it's like uh, taters, you know, mash them, boil them, stick them in the stew. Maybe that's a thing. Nothing wrong with some meaty bits. The best thing about a Saturday is waking up whenever you want on a Sunday. True. Well, you certainly don't want to sleep in past the stream, so at least make sure you set your alarm. Don't want to miss a live stream now. All right, our people need showers again. I know you're a little stanky. We got to make that outhouse again. Wait a minute. If there's a sandworm, a giant sandworm, does that mean Kevin Bacon is in this game? Is there a Kevin Bacon DLC? Oh, dude, look at this. Oh, I wish we could build up here. That'd be cool. Be cool to put, like, a guard tower up on the cliff. Oh, and then be able to see further? That'd be awesome. Uh, you're telling people to walk without rhythm? Why? Rhythm is a dancer. Nope, sandworm's still there. I tried. I tried, but sandworm's still there. Okay, please, more, no more destruction, Mr. Game, please. Okay, I think we're taking 12 wood over there, so that'll bring us close to uh, 190 and extra storage then. We're at 183, so I think the next load will bring over enough. When does the stream end? Eh, whenever we stop having fun. Oftentimes the streams are four hours, but if we're having a lot of extra fun, we go extendo. So, but sometimes, you know, there's only so many hours in a day, unfortunately. I gotta eat and do other things too, but I wish I could just game 24-7, bruh. You made spicy coleslaw? Oh, that's good. Toronto, you're hoping for the extendo? We've reached a milestone. Hey, born and raised. Nice. Achievement get. Well, if we don't, um, you know, if we die or whatnot, we'll start again. And if we, uh, and, and by the way, Surviving the Aftermath is a wonderful game. Just like Endzone, World Apart, and uh, Banished and so on. There's some great games that are going to continue to return to the channel year after year after year. I'd love to do another live stream of what I think is one of the greatest real-time strategy games of all time, which is World in Conflict, and I really wish they would have made another one. Uh, do you have a P.O. box up so we can Uber Eats Dino Nuggets and Wendy's during the streams? Uh, I've been meaning, I've worked with the PO, uh, post office on a P.O. box, and then there were some issues and things like that, and I... You know how it is sometimes. You try to solve a problem, and it's like a simple solution, but takes so long to just get in touch with anybody to get an answer that you just kind of like throw your hands up so it's kind of like on hold it's kind of on me but kind of on them too 
But I know some of you guys want to send me stuff via P.O. Box, and I want to as well. So I'll, uh, I'll get the ball rolling on that again. It's been a little while since I tried. The gate is going up now, boys. The gate is being built. Yes. So the post office is Google. Somebody pays attention to my streams, Toronto. I see you've been paying attention, bud. Thank you. That means a lot to chat. I meet mean, when chat pays attention to me complaining. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna need some more water, aren't we? Now that we got more survivors on the way. Luckily, we have another water collector here. So as soon as we get more people, we'll just put somebody right on water collection. That'll be good. Oh, yeah, the Halo Pelican from uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. See, all right, so sometimes there'll be, like, something that gets announced in the gaming world that I want to try with a particular friend. Like, anything to do with airplanes and stuff, I want Pinto to be around. Or Bradford, too. Pinto and Bradford, interestingly enough, are, are, but they're basically clones. I mean, they're I make the joke because they sound the same, but they're also both very much into airplanes. So, I want to play that one. I want Pinto to be around. The Pelican's really cool. From Halo and now it's in Microsoft Flight Sim. I like the fact that Microsoft Flight Sim is actually putting in like fictional aircraft but with realistic specs. You know what I mean? Like they try to make it realistic as if if these elements existed to make this aircraft, here's what its flight um, characteristics would be. I think that's cool. I hope they continue to do that where they put in more official things like that. That'd be awesome. I think that'd be awesome. Uh, Pinto and Bradford play games differently. Mm. Bradford and Pinto both rush into situations, especially like an escape from Tarkov. Can't believe how many times we played Tarkov and Pinto would just rush into things and get everybody killed. And then use the defense of, I'm not wrong, I'm not wrong, we found a cool gun. It's like, yeah, Pinto, we're all dead. Can't bring it home if we're all dead. Yeah, but we found it, I'm not wrong. <sighs> Pinto's got a good heart, though. That's why I keep putting up with him all these years. He's a good dude. Pinto's a bit more bold. Mm. I, get, I gotta be honest. If you guys saw my streams yesterday, I was, I was mostly annoyed with YouTube. Because they let me down on something that they had kind of promised to do. Um, but the, bo the boys almost, almost got on my nerves yesterday. Almost. I was, I was a little crabby, honestly, but they're my friends, so I, you know, I held my tongue the best I could, but I was annoyed. That was a little bit at them, but other things. All right, now we're starting to bring in plastic and wood. This is good, guys. We're building the gate. We've got, um, I think we should start doing repairs now. Got to get things uh, organized again. Missed a spot. There you go. And everybody needs a shower. Congratulations. You've rebuilt the gate and gained access to the world map. Yes. The gate is now open. And the vast world stands ready for your specialists to explore. This progress has not gone unnoticed, though. Soon, your colony will begin attracting various folks. Some good, others desperate, some tricksters, and those who just want to see you destroyed. All right, arm the gate with colonists or keep specialists close by to defend the gate from inevitable raids. Shadow Legends. We've reached a milestone. Have I watched The Boys on Prime? No, you know, honestly, there's a hell of a lot of series I want to get into, and I just... I get emotionally invested in some of the things I watch where I really want to see it through to the end, so... I usually don't start anything because I get afraid. There are survivors at the gate. Oh, we have somebody at the gate. Good. All right. We got a guard... Ragged bunch shuffles slowly towards the gate. Uh, what? What is that guy's name?
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Chat. Panda is a bear. The first survivor we get is... Li he may as well just be called... Why not just call him Bear or Grizzly or Grizzly Adams or Grizzly Panda Bear? Why not? Anyway, they're bringing supplies with them. 61... Whoa, seven adults. That's a lot. But that's good. That's a lot. We're going to need to build a shelter. 61 plastic, though. That's awesome. Tools, food. Oh, this is great. And we've got ourselves a fighter. Oh, this is good. Although I feel like there's going to be a fight at the gate. What's up? Your orders? Your command? Okay, everybody's cool. Alright, everybody be cool. All right, first and foremost, let's get somebody to work at the water station. That gives us plus seven water. Let's go with another emergency shelter. Um, I need to put a uh, burner around, though, for winter. We squeeze one back here. Maybe I'll put it next to that house. Uh, putting space between the buildings is good too because you can add decorations and that'll help happiness later on. How many homeless do we have? Five. Okay, we'll be alright then. Hello, it's from Poland. What's up, dude? Hi. Wow, now we got all these colonists to carry. Uh, Wolfpan, welcome aboard as a raptor egg. Thank you very much for your support. And we got a lot of people repairing. All right, well, the situation's uh, improved. Gone from absolute 100% death to 100% plus 10% death. Yay. New member, welcome. How did rap get so good at this? What, being pretty? I was born this way. Nah, it was Maybelline. Oh, maybe he was born with it. Maybe it was Maybelline. I don't, we may never know. And we're built. Oh, this is great. Everybody's getting to cracking with the uh, with the working. You build your roads double wide because I think it looks better. I agree. Yeah, the double wide roads are nice, and then you can put like a. Like, if you build, like, a double-wide road, then you leave a space between and do another double. You can do, like, a, a main avenue with, like, plants down the middle. I learned some of those techniques when I played Anno. I, I agree. That's a much nicer way to do things. Unfortunately, I'm kind of cramped between fertile soil that I don't really want to build in and water, which only Kevin Costner can live in. Huh? Yeah. All right. Outhouse is being built. Great. Shelter is being built. Great. <laughs> You're happy to be part of the family? Welcome, dude. Yep. Thanks to all you guys for your memberships and uh, and hanging out and stuff. I appreciate it. And it's fun. Live streaming is really cool. Videos on YouTube are one thing, but it's really nice now that streaming's been around for a while and people are accepting of it that... Uh, you know, YouTube used to just be a place where people would upload anywhere from like a two-second meme to like maybe a 20-minute video on a game. But it's great to see people being able to have actual meaningful conversations about all sorts of things in, in the chat. So that's nice. Wasn't Maybelline linked to hair loss? Does this look like hair loss to you? This toupee? No, it does not. Thank you.
All right, well, now that we've got uh, an extra specialist, I think it's time we head out in the real world. I think we're good on the, all the food. I don't want anybody out there, though, to... I'm only going to send out one, because I feel like we uh, could be attacked by something, especially that damn sandworm. Well, let's send out... Uh, yeah, Panda, we're going to send you out to the world map, mostly because you're a bear and I'm scared of you. No, we'll send the scout. Keep an eye on the bear. you got to keep the bears close, like your enemies. Let's go explore. The loveliest locks on YouTube is the guy from Skull and Bones. Oh, he got his idea from me. Well, welcome to the world map. We made it. New Fort Raptoria is looking juicy. Your command. Do we go for clothing? Do we go for tools? Or do we go for juicy, juicy research? Research it is. Consider it done. Look, he's got that Tucker hat on too. You wearing a hat? Well, now nah, it's kind of more of a like a hoodie. Chad, I think he discovered the purple Kool Aid. Anyway, all right, we're going for research. And then the first thing we're going to research is probably going to be... Oof. Work up the medical tree line would be good. Chat, what would you do first? What's a what's a good first research? Oh, here's the by the way, here's the new stuff. If you uh, are interested in the DLC, the New Alliances DLC, adds a ton of stuff that you can you can go to other cities to build these buildings for them. Like you can research, like um, like a school or a greenhouse, and then you can bring the technology to other cities and like build it for them and help help them to get their civilization started. And of course the more that they survive and the better they do, the more you do too, because then it, it strengthens the trade between both of your cities because people are stronger and stuff, so. You think medical first? I think medical might be a good one. I was thinking that with the fast, with the, um, the faster medical uh, speed, I think is a good one. Because then it frees up spaces from people dying and it also gets them back to work quickly. I think that's a good, I think that is a good option. You just finished installing it? Surviving the aftermath. All right, have fun. Uh oh, raiders. Local raider activity has picked up recently, and several gangs have been spotted looting and pillaging in the nearby areas. Uh, now would be a good time to strike and put an end to the madness they've brought to this region. All right, let's go raid those shadow legends. Let's see where that is. Got one meow. And one down here. One over here. Alright, we'll work our way back there. We'll get our we'll get Raj and Panda to the world map as soon as they're done where we are now. Then we'll get them to get tools and clothes for us. Clothing is especially important, but we'll be alright. How was chat today? One in the chat if you're having a good day. I hope everybody's putting a one in the chat. I, I wish you all well. Hope you're all doing well. Ooh, you're 1.5? Ooh, that's really good. Uh, no spy in them option? Um, that might... There is options to spy, but I don't think we can do it on that raider camp. The uh, new Alliance DLC does allow us to have, like, surveillance vans and stuff, which just... For whatever reason, makes me think of the radar van from uh, G the GLA from uh, Command and Conquer Generals, but that that's just me. Nice, sixty-nine plastic. Nice, nice. Everybody's stinky in this camp. Camp Stinkleton. No wonder the raiders are picking up. They can smell us from a mile away. Mm-hmm. 
Better build another one. I don't want any trouble. Alright, let's build some roads. Four colonists are now irradiated. Uh oh. Okay. Alright, we got medical. We're good. Did you get the water purifier and water collector? Um, I mean, we have a water collector. We have clean water storage, but we don't have a uh, purifier at the moment. There are purifiers, though, I believe. Hi, Booster. Good to see you, man. AK-47s hey, for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Those games were fun. Hey, a wandering merchant has wandered. I mean, skirt skirted into the area. Slow down, there's kids in this neighborhood. Jeez. A van approaches the gate, squeaking and creaking under the heavy load inside. Whoa. Be nice, man. He's just it's just his body type. Don't be so harsh. Jeez. A man dressed in eccentric clothes steps outside and waves, Greetings! May I interest you in some fine goods? He shouts and opens the back of his van to show a varied collection of items. I think we're going to go with the, uh, the research for sure. Yep, that's a good amount of research. Thank you, sir. Thank you kindly. I'll make sure to visit again with new goods. Until next time, skirt, skirt. It's long, nerds. Sir, you got to... Sir? You gotta, you gotta put the clutch in, sir. No, sir, sir. How does he have three engines? All right, anyway. Bye. Anyway. Okay. Um, it's the future, guys. Okay. It's all the future is all about horsepower, brother. Are sound effects important for a stream? Chad seems to like them. And I like them too. Uh, oh, we want to do research now. Got so many research points. Alright, I do think we should start with medical. We have to go guardians, nurses, and then medical speed. I also recommend ice fishing uh, if you don't have it. Winter is bad. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, winter is bad times. Honestly, I'm playing at 200% difficulty, so we could have a flash winter or something like that. Like a, a nuclear winter could strike at any time, too. So, Also, we need guard posts so that way we can um, defend against when we start to expand our lands. There could be creatures out there that want us dead to death, so... Uh -huh. bum, bum. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Winter storm. The first flakes of snow and morning frost are telltale signs of approaching winter storms. All in the struggle to keep warm as the weather quickly shifts from chilly to freezing, with heavy snowfall burying everything in its path. Burners keep shelters and workplaces warm inside their effective radius. Colonists exposed to freezing weather get cold. Cold turns to hypothermia, causing health loss. Clothing slows effects to exposure. Upgraded ones even better. 
Crops and lakes eventually freeze, halting production. Animals and ranches can die without a heater nearby. Well, uh, good thing we don't have uh, animals, so we don't have to worry about that. But now that means we need to make ourselves some firewood, so... Although it's not listed there. We don't have any. Oh, boy. Cancel this. All right. First things first. Let's build the uh, firewood station. Wait. Let me check and see which way this is facing. Okay, and then... Well, we survived nuclear fallout, but I think winter's gonna be worse than that. One there. And we're going to need some near the workplaces, but, uh... Yeah, everybody's Canadian now, yep. Yeah. yeah, with the logging. All the logging in the Eternal Winter. Oh, could you imagine playing the Eternal Winter map on with 200% difficulty? That would be pro move. I'd, lo I'd love to see somebody do that. I love that when people just either have a natural ability to figure that stuff out, or have, like, learned time after time after time how to do it. Okay. Let's go with that, and then we'll uh, on pause. I think there's a way where you can. Now I'll we'll see what happens. Well, now we're all out of wood. We're all out of wood. So lost without you, wood plus emote. Especially if you're a member. Defeat the bandits. Yep, that's gonna be a goal. Canadian sim. Make pellets out of sawdust. Yeah, it's a good idea, too. Ah, here's the Canadians, their natural habitat. I like how they made the pollution kind of this weird red color rather than just stereotypical green. Oh, wood is needed. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more wood. More wood is needed. Yes. Not enough wood, my lord. Correct. Wood needed. Wood needed, my lord. That is all correct, yep. Oh, well, luckily we've stocked up enough water for now. Oh. Gotta keep you on there, sir. Uh, too bad there's not more pallets of wood or something around. Got nothing. All right, and we'll try more berries.
The worm awakens and eats everyone? Oh boy. Well, the worm, the worm will be nice and toasty over there underground. Probably. We'll see. Hilarious how the wood needed sound bite is so universal. We've made a new discovery. Dude, every every survival game has like, it's like, oh, I'd like to build a uh, a chest so I can put my goods in. Oh, cool. You just need seven hundred million wood. Like a lot of games are like that, where they require so much wood to do that, all the time. Yo, Brian, thanks for the five. Appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you for doing what you do. Well, thank you. Ready. Wow, we're using a ton of wood. Oh, we're making a lot too. Excellent work. Thank you for doing what you do and help us with gaming. Keep hey, up man. the great work. Uh, well, we're all gamers, so, you know, gamers just gotta rep gamers, that's all. Alright, winter will be here soon. This is like Frostpunk now, but also with, like, radiation and, like, bugs and... Giant death sandworms that want to eat us alive. I gotta be honest though, this uh, level of difficulty is quite exciting. I thought we would have died to death by now. Have I seen an Arma 3 DLC? I haven't played too much Armor. Uh, I want I want um, Pinto to get me into Arma and uh, maybe Bradford too. Uh, next week, the new Hell Let Loose update comes out, so I'll be playing that as well, hopefully. The game is a lot of fun when you have a great person for leadership. Squad lead or commander. And it's the same with Arma. Oh, we already cleared out one plastic pile. Uh, there's still about another 500 plastic remaining. I don't have a PS5. Can you buy me one? Um, I don't think PS5s actually exist. I've, n I've never seen one in the wild, so... I'm sorry, partner. Can't buy you one. I can't buy you something that doesn't exist. Alright, the burners are ready. Nice. I think I've given... I was going to get a PS... I'm, I'm going to have to because I want to play the new God of War. Alright, so now what we're going to do is make the logging camp. Winter is here. We're going to start turning all this wood into firewood and then we'll get these uh, burners going. Luckily we have a second. Tell me you need attention without telling me you need attention? Sure. Subscribe to my channel. 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 Oh god. Oh god, it's been angered. Run! You've you've angered the Kevin Costner. I mean the uh Kevin Bacon. He has been angered. Why don't you guys go ahead and uh, move the work area over there? Just stay away from that giant death worm. Yeah, we're gonna go over there. And now we're playing Frostpunk. Alright, we're gonna get two people working at the logging camp. They're gonna make uh, firewood for us, and then those burners should be operational. Ready. And our uh, specialist should be able to go to the world map, too. Is this a World War II game? Chat, this is a World War III game. Or, well, no, actually, post-World War III game. You know you know another game that's kind of like this? It's kind of like this, but kind of not, but it definitely, it definitely hits those vibes, is uh, 
Ones in the chat, if you've ever played this war of mine. Has anybody in the chat ever played this war of mine before? This game and that game kind of have a lot in common in terms of it being like a survival builder. That one's kind of more of like a shelter builder, but there's still a lot of similarities. You love that game? Yeah. I played that game a few times on the channel when there was like DLCs and stuff, but didn't get too far into it, but because they now finally released like a Final Cut edition, I think I think I need to play it. I think I'm going to do like a, a first look video on it. I don't really honestly remember the first thing about it. So I'd like to do like a, hey, like it's now complete. Like there's a complete version of the game that you can get. So I'll do my first look at the final full release version. And then we'll probably do some live streams on it. I kind of like doing that on the channel. I think it's a good idea for me to make like a video first and then go into a live stream. So that way people who don't have the time to watch the streams get a video and the people who have time to watch the streams get a live stream and the people who have time to do both or interest in both get the whole the whole package awesome all right hopefully we're making firewood now boys shower and not here okay What's up? All right, you guys go to the world map. What you need? Yeah, drop that. You just come to the world map. We got to get exploring. You know, uh, the Dune game that we played as well, the Dune RTS, also has uh, multiplayer now, and I think a new faction coming in it as well, speaking of sandworms. Dude, I really want to get a game that's like uh, Dune, but a city builder. I want it to be like Frostpunk, kind of. Well, Frostpunk's more survival. Dune, a Dune city builder would be more about the export uh -huh. of spice. Roger. Of course. Oh, that's great. You can actually see that there's a uh, storm over the... Uh... That's cool. That looks like a trench line, but that's probably a geothermal vent. But uh, this is cool. There's actually a storm over the base. That's amazing. Love that. Uh, isn't there a new Wild West City Builder coming out? Yes, there's Wild West Dynasty, and there's also um, Cowboy Simulator, I think. I don't know. You know, I honestly just want a game that's Red Dead, but um, more just like open world simulator. I'd, I'd love Red Dead, but... Like, once, once you're done with the whole rootin', tootin', and shootin', you just do a little more rootin' and tootin'. And maybe, like, farming. You know what I mean? Yeah, once you hang up the, uh, once you hang up the, uh, the holster, it'd be kind of cool to, like, actually simulate life. You know, like, you actually buy property and upgrade a house and stuff like that. And there's some games that come close, but... Yeah. Yeah, ranch simulators kind of like that, but I don't know. I feel like there's there's some genres that are not explored enough. I feel like uh, space games, pirate games, and cowboy games are kind of all the same. But I do feel like cowboy games of all of them don't get enough attention. Red Dead is certainly a big, 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 big part of that. Red Dead Redemption and Red Dead Redemption 2. But, you know, it's like space games. There's probably, like, of all the games, space games are probably, like, the most... There's, like, the most space games. Whether it's Dead Space or Calypso Protocol or um, Starfield or Star Citizen. Those are all big and popular. All right. But then, yeah, the second place, I think, is... Uh, I don't know if it's... Maybe maybe pirates don't get as many games. Like, you got Sea of Thieves, and then maybe Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and then, you know, the up-and-coming Skull and Bones, but... Uh-oh. A bear. 
I knew it. Uh oh. A massive horned beast has been seen stalking near the gate. It's evidently hungry and ca rap calling Raptor out by name. No, it's hungry and looking for careless colonists for easy prey. The fastest way to solve this would be to hunt it down, but trying to lure it into a trap is also an option. Well, let's try to trap it. It's a dice roll, but let's see. Hey, we did it. Somebody was injured, but that's a lot of good tasty meat. The Beast Within. A few nervous colonists walk outside the gate with a large net and some weapons. The beast charges at them, and as the net is thrown, the animal easily shrugs it off. One colonist is hit on the head and falls to the ground bleeding. The other colonists manage <coughs> to retrieve the net and finally bring the animal down. A few brutal axe swings later, and the beast's head falls off, leaving its entire body to be harvested for meat. Good. All right. And then we just need uh, somebody to be healed up. We're good. Well, that's going to leave a mark, but at least it's better than not having meat. Meat. That's weird. It didn't, like, give us... Oh, maybe it's being transported. Okay, so we're gathering research, we're gathering tools and clothing. Uh, we should probably do research. Forgot all about that. My bad. Alright, I'm, I'm enjoying my time. More veal is needed. Yep. <laughs> the end of Red Dead Redemption 2 is this opens up farming simulator, yeah. Yeah, you, you, you get a piece of land, you hand it down to your, your family and their family's family and so on and so forth, and then you just buy a tractor. Surviving Mars is awesome. Have you ever played? I have, Wallman. Thank you very much for the uh, 1090. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, there's uh, f quite a few live streams and videos. The most recent uh, DLC for Surviving Mars involves trains, which are, is actually pretty cool. So, that's neat. Keeping things nice and toasty warm around here. Well, we haven't had anybody die to death, but I feel like we could start work on the burial pit soon. It's gonna happen. Uh oh. Wait, what are you under attack from? Oh god, another sandworm. Get out of there! Huh? Oh no. There's two sandworms over there. Well, let's go logging over here. Maybe these trees will regrow in time. What's up, Gadwin? Good to see you. How do we kill those worms underground? Do we just send the specialists over there and they'll just pop out and battle it out? All cleaned up. Nice, good job, bro. Now, uh, do we need tools? No, not yet. Can do. Mission complete. Good job, bro. You can bring the clothes back, though. We will need those. Okay. And since Panda is our fighter, we can see if we can go kill some some uh, sandworms. We can kill them with guards too. Okay. Yes. Hmm? 
reporting in. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Everybody's going over there. Excellent. All right, we're going to have a fight. Here we go. Oh, nice. He's got like an SMG. No, he's got like a rifle. Cool. Yeah. What's up? Get wrecked, loser. Got him. What you need? Ew, mealworms, gross. All right, uh, you get a vacation, sir. Take a little time off. Woo! Good work, everybody. That was cool. Our guards have crossbows. That's awesome. And we can harvest that whenever. We need that area though for trees. How much meat? Not enough. We need more meat. More meat is needed. And more wood is needed too. Wow, despite this being like a 200% difficulty, uh, I, I thought this would be... Um, not fun, honestly. I thought it was, it was going to just be like really annoying and tedious. And some things are, but not too bad. So I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time. Mandatory fun zone chat. Okay. So, what else do we got? No, I've never played RimWorld before. I don't think so. At least not on the channel. But we've played other games that are similar to that, like Prison Architect and a game called Clan Folk, which takes place in Scotland. Pretty cool, the Highlands. But soon, chat, soon we'll play. We'll play RimWorld soon. Okay, we're scouting out to the west, and we've got our scout still getting research for us. Good. Let's keep working on medical training, then. Heal speed plus 20%. Gonna be a good one to have. Do we need to order the specialist to heal? I, I think they can heal on their own. Yeah, I think he just heals up over time. Oh yeah, there it is. Right there on the right side, you see 40... Their re recovery is 40 HP every 12 hours. So, in about... Tw every day, it's 80 heal. So he should heal within about a day. Oh, things got colder now. Now we have to worry about water uh, preservation. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. Okay. Yeah, fire up the Jenny. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool if we could salvage generators and things like that. Everything on this game is a little more bigger scale. Big. Oh, RimWorld's on Xbox, too? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, one of the cool things about RimWorld is, like, all the... I like all the scheduling that you can do. Games like, uh... Going Medieval and Space Haven and stuff that kind of expand upon the whole scheduling system. But there's many systems within there. Pretty cool. Okay, so we've got a lot of wood and plastic now. Still not enough, though. We need more. More wood is needed. 
Luckily, they're putting out, uh, putting out lots of firewood. I love how the deer are just chilling. That's going to be a lot of veal, right, chat? Okay, the next thing is... Oh, that's almost done. Uh, let's do... Skinning next, which will then let us get the... Then we can go down the tailor. More veal is needed, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Very revealing. On who is new in the chat. Have you played the Distant Places DLC for Endzone? Yep, playthroughs on the channel. We have a video on it and also a live stream too. I think we did both. Very good. Damn. There's an endless winter mode for this. Could you imagine constantly having to manage that? I feel like we should do that, um, we'll play, when we play again, we'll play more on normal, or when we do, like, the endless winter and see how challenging that is, because, I feel like, managing the water and stuff like that, when it's endless winter, you're going to have to do greenhouses, which, which means you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to do power management all the time. While Resident Evil 4 is on sale for $5 on Steam, all the older Resident Evil games are on sale. Really? Interesting. Good thing about Resident Evil 4, they're remaking that too. And with newer game systems, it's kind of cool to see that winning formula, but like with new stuff added. Modern day take on it. Years later. Uh, hi, Raptor. Hi from a secret admirer. Oh, wait. Now it's not a secret, though, unless... Well, now the secret is out. You admire me? Or is someone else admire me? No. That can't be true. Nobody followed me on Instagram. When I said, hey, if you want to follow me on Instagram, here's my link, everybody was like, no. Actually, I don't even know. Let me check. Uh, oh, yeah, a few people followed. Uh, thank you, uh... Shadow and uh, Procrastic Geek. Thank you very much for following on Instagram. That was cool. Thanks, guys. Wait a minute. We got bandits at the gate? Oh, hell no. These people have clearly been through a lot. They look frail and are likely easy to overpower. But the look on their faces makes it clear they're desperate enough to do anything. Hmm. Thank you very much, Mulu452 for the five bomb for chat. Yeah. All right, here's the deal, by the way. Couple things real quick, folks. One, thank you very much, everybody, for your crazy, awesome, cool, gifted memberships. That's awesome. Number two, if you want to get one of those memberships, I think YouTube moved it to where now you just have to hit the join button, and then there's like three dots in the corner. You can just hit that to, there's a little slider where you can allow someone else to give you one. So if somebody who's awesome in the chat drops a big old gift bomb, you can then automatically claim that by setting it to allow. It goes to the most pe the people who've been subscribed and active the most in the chat, according to YouTube. So just say hi and things like that. And, um, you know, it'll just keep you active in the chat. Um, one thing I wanted to do was every... I wanted to hit 5,000 members and then do a big O celebration or something like that. Some some sort of cool thing I think you guys would think would be awesome where you could vote on the games we play. But I think instead of doing that, I'd like to do that every 500 new members. So, right now we're at like 3,000, almost 500 new members. So here's what I want to do. Instead of waiting all this time to get to 5,000, I think we're going to do it every 500. Every time we hit 500 new members, uh, we're going to think of something really cool to do. So uh, you all on the Discord can vote or make suggestions on things that we do. I think I want to play games with you guys that you vote on. I think I should do a mandatory like monthly Fall Guys stream or something because that was just amazingly fun and everybody enjoyed themselves like uh, crazy. 
And then I could do something else as well, like something IRL. So uh, if anybody has any suggestions, jump on the Discord and start firing off your ideas. Game ideas that we should play, things that you want to see me do. You guys support me all the time. That's pretty amazing. So uh, please do throw me your ideas and stuff on the Discord. Because I want to do things you guys want to see. That's what makes this fun. All right, desperate times. So we got uh, raiders at the gate. Luckily, I think if we give these guys food, it'll give us a big bonus uh, financially. And I think that will help us to get more um, uh, specialists in the future. And that's going to be worth a lot. So I'm going to give a lot of food. They want a big old order of Wendy's. So let's do it. Boom, 300 coin. The travelers don't seem to believe their eyes as the food is carried out to them. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's not much, but please take this. A woman hands over some silver. Group heads off with heavier pockets and lighter hearts. Good for you. All right, that cash was good. We Basically, we traded. So that's good. Uh, James with the two. All sounds good to me. Thank you very much. All right, so we're close to hitting like 3,500 members. So when we do that, I'll, uh, I'll issue an IOU to chat since it's probably short notice and we'll figure out what chat wants me to do. We'll come up with some fun ideas. And I know you guys want me to play Chinatown Detective Agency, but that's going to be 5,000 members. That's going to, I'm locking that one high in the ivory tower at 5,000 for my own mental health and safety. Okay, let's keep exploring. Mission complete. Ooh, look at that. Another uh, observatory. How lucky. Build a research outpost into the sector to get access to the knowledge it holds. Ooh. Iodine pills, we need those. All right. And we got our boy here still big brain in it down at the uh, the old museum. Chow wants you to do a barbecue strain. That would be cool. Oh, here's a a new specialist we can recruit. Ah, uh, we need 700. Uh Let's have him wait by the gate. We'll, we'll come back to that later. We're gonna need a lot more coin. Chat wants you to do a barbecue stream. Barbecue, yes. yeah. Yeah, hunting bandits will give us a uh, coin too. Yeah, that's true. We'll try to get everyone healed up and then we'll head out. Yes. Well, we, we could go over here and try to hunt these guys. Maybe we should do that instead. I don't know how long our scout will be there. He's got 150 remaining. Okay. Might not be too long. On a scale of 1 to 10, how good is this game? Uh, it's hard to give number ratings and stuff for, for games for me, but uh, I think... So I played this game while, while it was an Epic Game Store exclusive. I played it like in the beta or the alpha. Then I played the beta. Then I played like the early release. Then I played like the post-release. Then I played it like when it was released on Steam. And then I played... The, I feel like it's been making all the right moves to keep me interested with all the improvements that they made and DLCs that they've added. So, and this is my first time like toughing it out on uh, the hardest difficulty. We're playing on like 200% right now, or at least one of the harder for normal, and it's great. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we're playing slow on purpose, and I think, you know, even though we haven't gotten much done, we've experienced a lot. So this is definitely a game where you can invest a lot of time into it and feel good about the. Uh, I think the recent DLC is re really makes your uh, city not feel like a city, but more like a like a superpower, like a nation, or like a you know like a faction rather than just like a like a survival city. So it's pretty cool. Can't complete the order. I think it's a it's a cool game. Hopefully the storm's out of here soon. 
Oh, there's the firewood. I was looking for it here under wood. It's right there. Here. We're producing four. We're pro consuming three, so we'll have extras. Water's okay, though. Water those... Uh, when does the winter end? Yeah, no, no kidding. Soon. PM. Okay, we got another sandworm over there. Any others? Let's see. Scan. Nope. Soon. Soon. Yeah, I'd, l I'd love a Mad Max city builder like this, too. I really want them to make another Mad Max game. They had the one from, like, what, 2015? That was phenomenal. Such a good game. Mad Max was... awesome. Do I rem remember Mad Max on Nintendo? Ooh, I didn't even know they made a Mad Max Nintendo game. Yeah, our goal now has to be to get a lot of currency so we can get more specialists, because now we want to focus on the world map. Alright, so as soon as we can, we'll make, we'll make more moves on the world map. I feel like we should store up more water. Uh, what comes after uh, the aftermath? Uh, recess or lunch, depending on what, what your homeroom is. Maybe English. Oh, maybe maybe you've uh, got a, an elective. You know, maybe you're like on the archery club or something, or maybe you're working uh, a technical thing where you can vocational. You know, where you can go out and start an apprenticeship on a lathe or something. Wish you could domesticate the deer. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. I mean, we can have animals in this game, but we should be able to like trade for. Certain things like chickens. Ah, oh, we might not be able to afford that guy. He could always come back, though. Scavengers are good, but I think fighters are going to be more important here. Fighters and scouts and scientists. But they all have their bonuses when you go out on quests. Great, more water storage. Now we have 1,300 water storage for when the winter is over. I have a feeling it'll be coming to an end soon. We could build another water well. We should do that. Plus five is good. Another great thing about the wells is, again, they don't have to have somebody working at them. They take up a bit of materials, though. Well, without water, you're dead to death. That's like Canadian Simulator now. that thing a priority.
All right, let's build some more uh, wells if we can. If we could do five, that would be amazing. Five would be amazing. Good on clothing, too. Uh, we need a game that a base builder that takes place after nuclear fallout. Yeah, there's um, this and then also end zone a world apart, which has a little bit to do with that. Oh, here we go. We got our moves again. Can do. Ready. And Panda's fully healed, so let's get you to the world map. There's also a Mad Max game on Super Nintendo. Really? Very cool. Your command. All right. All right, we're close. We're close to attacking the, the raiders. We're going to go to war with the rebels shortly. I just want to hit five. Oh, wow, you can actually see where some of the land is actually decent. Ah, uh, right up there. So if we go up to our... Ooh, if we go uh, west, there there's some really good plot of land here. We're going to have to explore to our west. Seems to be some pretty worthwhile soil and such over here. Did I see the movie Greenland? I don't think I've heard of that one. Wife made chicken and mushroom curry soup. Damn. That sounds amazing. If you run to the pub, do you think she'll divorce you? What? Why would you even want to leave when you have curry and chicken mushroom soup? That's amazing. That is amazing. All right, nice. Now we've boiled that down to negative four water. We're gonna have to build guard towers or something, or what is it, watch towers, whatever it is, to go west. Those could be a little spendy. Scout towers, yeah. But we got to do it. There we go. Well, at least we brought back winter clothing at the right time. Alright, soon we're about ready to go to war with those guys. We're about ready to attack. Can the sandworms destroy your buildings? I think if we... If people went close to the sandworms to try to build a building, I think the sandworms would just attack them and they would run away. But if they could, I bet they would. Okay, berries depleted. Oh. They still got one more little thingy for it. Water's at 168. 
All right, time to go to war. Yes. We have to explore this region. Can do. Reporting in. And we'll you explore got this region too. It looks like we'll be able to scout out to the next raider camp too. So we'll be able to attack one and then immediately move to the next. This game is different than you remember, you're pretty sure. Yeah, there wasn't winter or anything like that in the game before. And I made all these suggestions too, like the things that I wanted to see, like the world map actually showing something going on at your camp. They added in later on, so if an electrical storm hits or if there's like a meteorite strikes or whatever going on at your camp, you'll kind of see it like taking place in the world around you. Mission complete. So they did good jobs with that. All right, more research to do. Let's get that started. Let's go for uh, production speed on trapping and such. Then we'll go for this one afterwards. Gotta get the food stuff sorted. Your command. And then our scout will push you south. Roger. Okay, so we're scouting northeast, north, well, southeast, and or what kind of. East ish and then south. We'll say northeast, southeast, and. Oh, yeah, coconut milk with uh, chicken and. Yeah, with no noodles or rice or anything like that. Yeah, coconut milk and chicken and stuff like that all go together so well. Chicken, why do you have to be so good? All right, water's not doing too bad. And we're building a tower over here to scout out more positions for fresh water. Is that a lake? Oh, it's a river. Oh, and then right into a lake. We're in a really good spot to defend. Like, they'd have to come across... Well, during the storms, if whoever they are attacked, they could probably go across the ice, but... We have the advantage of the roadway gate. Oh, your brother landed at uh, B-25 Mitchell now? Oh, that's cool. He, he was on board for a little tour. Now you're going to do a B-17G that accompanies it? Oh, that's cool. Oh, I'd love to do that. I should do that. Is go rent some time in a, uh, on a World War II flight or something like that. I've been on tanks before. That I've rented out. There's some pictures of that on my Instagram and stuff. Yes, another bait for my Instagram with the links in the chat. Exclamation point. Instagram, you should follow now. Actually, there's some pretty cool stuff on my Instagram. Not as not only is it just um, food from all over the world, but also some uh, uh, some cool vintage uh, guns like um, MG42s and such, and also uh, snorkeling and uh, got some battle tanks there, some T55s, some um, British, uh, oh, I think they're called, uh, Abbots, the Abbot, uh, um, artillery, cool stuff, SPG. Oh, we have no free carriers. I think I'll take one person off plastic. There are survivors at the gate. Ooh, never mind. Wow, you people made it all the way through the snow like that? You crazy. A ragged bunch shuffle slowly towards the gate. Ooh. Oh. Well, we have a scientist. That'll be good for our research for sure. Two adults, two children, three elders, and 25 fuel. Well... No other supply, but welcome aboard. Do I remember the game RD? I don't think I know what RD may be. Yeah, okay, we'll build another house there. How many are homeless? Six? Okay, that'll be fine. Uh, yeah, self-propelled artillery, yeah. Cool stuff. 
helicopters, all sorts of fun stuff. Back in the day. Are we still scouting? We've made a new discovery. Yay, discoveries. Okay, so we finished... Uh... Oh, they're wor working on hunting crew now. Which gives us more trapping options. How may I help you? All right, Kate, let's get you to the world map. Uh, the sp science specialists gather science faster than others. Ready. So they do a good job of gathering uh, All right. science at a faster rate. We might find a science building here, so I'm going to just keep her over here. Roger. But yeah, as you can see at the... Just behind my head, it says that she can gather uh, 200, 250 science points an hour, so basically within, or 12 hours, so within about a day she can clear out the museum, the thing that took the scout a lot longer to do. Uh, oh. Job done. Oh, good, we got some candy bars here, go grab those. My pleasure. Some protein bars and stuff, that'll be good. Oh yeah, they're building a uh, shelter over here. So these guys will have a house in a minute. Not too long. Well, unfortunately, that means we need more water. Even more water, so... We need to build ourselves a water well. Well, well, well. Oh, that's where that person went. Okay, so we need the scout tower. The scout tower is only 32% scouted, so they can eventually explore up to about here. Oh, that sounds cool, Scott. Not heard of that one. What's up, Matza? How you doing? How do you know when winter will end? I have no idea. It seems like it's been here forever. I need to get these water stations and food and stuff back up and running. Kind of cool if we could salvage these cars for metal. We got one water left. Now we got none. We only have enough materials to build one. I bet the cold will come back sooner or later. Oh, is it retreating? I think the storm is ending. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. Okay. Never mind, it's ending. We have survived the winter. Things are thawing out. Fantastic. And forget that construction. We did it. We've made a new discovery. Excellent. Ooh, that was close again. First try, W emotes, yeah, brother, yeah, yeah. Now we could go on to basic farming, but we'll need 125 science. I think basic farming is going to be required. We're just going to run out of. Uh, space to trap and do other things eventually. It looks like we're out of tools too. Great. And clothes. Great. 
Raj here has some tools. Oh yeah, that's right. Use that arc welder on that candy bar. I want the scouts to finish because I know there's going to be some science there. If I, of course, if I send her north to go scout out the area in the north, then there'll be science there. If I don't, then there won't be science. How it works. Which, Grodinger's uh, scout, science scout. Ah, beautiful. And pretty soon we should be able to kill that other uh, sandworm. All done. Ah, uh, of course. How may I help you? I knew it. Okay. Ma'am, go science. Not gonna work. All done. Yep. All right, let's get these. Uh, let's get these uh, bandits out of the way. Attacking. Yep. Showtime. Cool. We're going to kick some ass over there. The problem with that one is not only the water for that whole winter period, but the food could have... It really took a big hit on the food as well. Oh. With the lack of fishing and uh, possibly farming if we had a bigger uh, uh, settlement. Anyway, at least we got a fishing pier going. We have six idle workers, so we can get everybody back on task. Levi, thanks for the five. Yeah, Raptoria FTW, bro. FTW meaning the fort that wins. Easy win, Raptoria FTW. Yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, once we get the uh, farming thing ready with our scientists, then we'll start farming. And uh, here's our fertile soil here, so. Uh-oh, a little friend has been lost. Oh, a teddy bear? You want us to send out a scouting party? A small girl approaches with okay. watery eyes and snot running from her nose. Oh, you want us to go find your cat? All right, we'll search, ma'am. 20 happiness and 9 fish. Yeah. Oh, good. And everybody's happy because of it. Oh, good. The colonists overall happiness is increasing. Welfare is very good. Uh, we're just not doing so well on the tools right now, but we'll be on that shortly. we got to explore more of our territory. Guess it probably couldn't hurt if we go north to... Go directly north from the gate. Now we got lucky. Sometimes those can end with negatives or nothing happening at all, so. Yep. What's up? Oh, yeah. We're gonna kick their ass. Yeah, I got a lot of prior experience in this game, but I don't know everything, that's for sure. Every time you play, you learn something new, and that's what... I guess that's what makes it the most exciting, is to learn all sorts of new things. Every time you play. Yeah! Winter is gone. It's all over. Finally, we survived. Okay, I want to save all of our wood for building. I'm 
eventually these trees will regrow and we can build a um, forestry buildings I think to regrow that stuff you love my old videos like war game red dragon that was a great game uh, Warno is the newest one out, but obviously because of some things going on in the world, I kind of lost interest in some of that more modern-y like game. Plus, uh, I think the game also is like, it's kind of incomplete. It's in beta, so I want to play it when there's like a campaign and stuff. I thought Regiments was good and stuff too, but yeah. Every once in a while I test the waters with some things to see how people respond, but um, you know. You know the internet. Wow, look at that. Happiness is improving. That's amazing. We're doing so well so far. Levi, thanks for the another five, dude. Appreciate that. Thank you for your super chat, Brad. But Ma, I want a challenge. I need to play my new PC then. Great stuff always. Are you playing on your new PC? You got a new PC? I'm going to need one soon, too. All right, goal is going to be to get to 150 so we can research farms, and then we're going to start farming right here. I'm probably clearing out some of this uh, pollution soon, too. Soon. Soon. Ah, that's great. We're increasing water by five. Great. I think the next thing that's going to hit is either a pandemic or a heat wave. I think it'll be a pandemic. Gonna bring tools back soon too. Anthony, thanks for the three months as a little raptor. Been watching the streams for a year. Glad to be retired since it is part of my day. Oh, good. You've made uh, watching the streams a part of your day. That's good. Well, we're happy to have you here. All oh, these guys are getting wrecked. They are dead to death. They're out of here, mister. I think we made the right choice by building the uh, little um, medical tents early. This is our intense civ care unit, chat. <laughs> See what I did there, chat? You know you love it. Oh darn! We're under attack. No. A rat beetle? Uh-oh. Well, we do have our scouts at the... Uh, I think they can defend, right? No. Wow, oh, bro, you're attacking my new shiny new tower I just built? Wow. Jerk. Absolutely rude, sir. That is rude. Shoot. Uh, Raj, you break off and... Back to the camp, Raj. We got a rodent problem. Not going to happen. Chat, you better get the uh, Raid Shadow Legends spray cans. We need to spray for rats and for uh, cockroaches. Oh boy. Oh no, did I get rid of the can? Uh-oh. You don't see the spray can, just the zombie? God. We must have ran out of spray. <laughs> Uh-oh. I have to go to the store chat and get some more soon. 
All right, we're under attack and we're attacking the enemy. This is interesting. We'll see how long we can survive. Should be okay. They're just uh, damaging things that they shouldn't be. Leave us alone, bugs. Game has a lot of bugs chat. All right, we're going to have to defend. Bum, bum. Colony is under attack. Red alert. Yeah, we're going to make them good bugs by making them dead bugs. That's true. We got a little bit more to do on that, though. Oh, the nice thing, though, we is... Yeah. Lost. Wait, we, we've lost? What do you mean? Wait, they just lit a house on fire. Wait, what do you mean we've lost? Ma'am, are you surrendering to the bugs? Wait, what? 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 Wait, what? Nothing's... Wait, nothing got destroyed. And nobody died. Okay. What? Uh, well, um, uh, yeah, we didn't lose. Okay. Yep. Actually, wait, there's not even any bugs left. They're all dead. And wait a minute, there's their carcasses right there. The map is littered with their dead bodies. Okay, then. Alright, let's clear out that other bug. Mm -hmm. We'll get a little retaliation on the bugs for their... I, I guess they declared victory. Oh, guys, we lost. Oh, no. I guess. That really bugs me. Ready. Got him. First try, yeah, brother. Nice. We won the battle. And we won the battle against the uh, bandits. Excellent work. The group appears. Oh, also we got money from that one too. So big, big success on that. A uh, group appears to appear like a scouting appears to be like a scouting party. They were carrying very little supplies. And there was barely any loot on them. Did they just have a have bad luck or were they looking for something? Plus thirty jerky. Mmm, jerky. All done. Wow, nice work, ma'am. You looted all that science. I didn't even know. Basic farming it is. Oh no, we did that. 
Uh, let's see. Soil studies. Planting speed plus 75%. Holy crap. Ooh, I'm, I'm researching that one. All right, we're researching both of those. Wow. 75% increased planting speed? That's crazy. Anything to get food faster is going to be awesome. Because once we take care of food and water, we, we can then focus on medical, which will be very important. And we got to get tools, too, which we have. Excellent. There's a visitor. She arrived unannounced. Oh. Are you going to answer us, uh, ask us a riddle thingy? I remember you. Rumors have circulated about a deranged old woman living in the forest. Susan which But having her arrive at the gate is a surprise nonetheless. The woman smiles with almost too... Let's grin. Interested in riddles? Then riddle me this. Everything here lives from me. I am bigger than the biggest, yet every day I disappear. What am I? Rain, the wind, sun, or mercy? Ooh. Chat, what do you think? One, two, three, or four? What's the answer to this riddle? Everything here lives from me. I am bigger than the biggest, yet every day I disappear. What am I? Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. You guys think it's uh, rain and the wind? You think it's mercy? Hmm. No, chat. I... I, I don't see a single person in the chat going with the sun, though. I'm going to go with three. That's saying one, two, and four. But no, not a single person is putting a three in the chat. So I'm going to go with three, then. That's probably it. Oh, yeah, we did it. I mean, I did it. Not you. Me. <laughs> I'm kidding. You guys all said three, too. I'm kidding. Which is wits. Uh, the woman's smile grows larger. Yes, that's it. She reaches into her robes and hands over a, ba a basket. Grandma, you're handing us your pills? You take your pills. Go watch Matlock. As soon as the colonists take the basket, she turns around without saying a word and heads back into the woods. Well, we got ten iodine pills, so that's good for uh, radiation sickness. That's good. That yeah, worked out. Good job, chap. Good job. Matlock. Okay, good food and wa water is increasing. That's good. Let's listen to a different radio station, shall we? It's been two weeks in the game, by the way. 14 days, and we've already survived nuclear fallout, a winter. Uh, raiders tried to attack us, but we were able to negotiate a bunch of bugs, which apparently were, we died to. We were defeated by the bugs, apparently. Let's listen to Skylight's radio. And back to the world map. Oh, Kate, you're done. Uh -huh. You did the, uh... Oh, let's go get okay. close. Alright, we're gonna move to... The bandit camp down here now. All cleaned up. Sure go thing. scout that out. We'll have a Raj here, uh... Heal up for a while after his uh, excursions against the bugs. Wow, 24 people in the camp. Not bad. Hmm? Tower is 100% scouted, so now we can go east even further. Yeah, we should definitely scout out this land here. You wish Grandma brought back chicken nuggies? I know. She would be... Yeah. She'd be greeted as a hero. 
One that we don't deserve. Specialist ready for action again. Uh-huh. Okay, you're busy. Uh-huh. Andrew, you're heading south, bro. Our fighter. Moving. Uh, you can also find cars in this game, too, and, like, uh, uh -huh. bring them back to base and fix them up and stuff like that, so that's nice. Do I have the ability to make farms now? Not yet. Oh, we can do a trapper, but the problem with the trapper is you need a lot of trees, so we're going to need to, uh, oh, barely going to have any efficiency. We expand to the west. Oh, yeah. Plenty of trees down here. Whoa. Holy crap, wild boars. Holy crap. They're the size of uh, bulls, not boars. Good meat. Uh, yeah, there are things to clean up the radiation, we just have to research them. They're a little more late game, but uh, yeah, eventually you can clean all this up. Definitely want to get rid of the one there, and here, and here. At least three of them we need to clean up as soon as we can. Okay, we doing more research here? Oh yeah, basic farming and then uh, soil studies. Oh, that's going to be great. Can't wait to finish the soil studies research. Another good thing about this DLC, the New Alliances, is once we establish contact with the other camps, it becomes really... So long as we help them out, we, we get a lot of benefits both ways from that. We've made a new discovery. Bro, no. What are you doing up there, bro? Alright, basic farming is now complete. Nice. Yeah, that's right. You get special buildings from your allies, yeah. And special things that you can build for them, too. Really cool. Okay, next order of business is to try to get uh, an increase in food since we're having trouble getting more meat. Although we could do fishing. Another, another fishing pier would be alright. Select our seeds. So we have flax, corn, and potatoes. We'll do uh, corn and potatoes first. Flax is good. That'll help us to make linen, which is good for clothing. But that's only good for, like, normal clothes, not, like, sturdy clothes for winter. I think we can, yeah, we can uh, research water pipes and stuff eventually. Corn and potato now. Wonderful.
Then we'll have two more people working on fishing, so we'll be down to three. Mission complete. Oh! Hell yeah, brother. We got ourselves the A-Team van with the snowplow in the front of it. Sweet. All right. Wow, I'm really close to camp. Really, really close. I think that's the closest I've ever found a vehicle. Hell yeah, brother. Rip and dip. Hell yeah. Nice. Okay. Now you keep scouting. That, yes. that is a big find. Your orders? Can't do. Not gonna work. Not going to happen. We'll get you to the camp. Awesome, a big W in the chat for the van. Although the W doesn't stand for Winnebago, it stands for, wow, there's a van over there. What's up, Nolich? Good to see you. Hi, chat. Welcome aboard. We definitely want to keep the food up over 200. Luckily, the farming will help with that. Planting speed will help with that. Oh, and we're building our uh, other uh, fishing pier. Very nice. It appears so. Oh, and of course, we have our We've made a new discovery. rat meat around, but that's not that great. Yes. Raj, why don't you go ahead and get us some meat? Peer pressure, yeah. Yeah, the van is awesome. The cool thing about the van is it can transport a lot more people, and there's like, sm like as you'd imagine, like the the bigger vehicles are less fuel efficient, but they can carry more people and such. So. If you needed to get everybody to the western side of the map, you could load up the van from your base with all your scouts and then head west and then drop off everybody and then meet back at the van. Uh, or if you get a smaller like hatchback, it works like a good scout car, so then you can send out your scouts to the east as far as you or west or wherever, wherever you need to explore. Really cool. Works nice. Nice. Okay, so we got infected colonists that are healing up. Well, colonist is hiding something. Turns out a colonist has been secretly feeding rat beetles in the colony. The feeder is surrounded by an angry group of people demanding answers. Uh, the feeder tries to explain that the rat beetles are actually misunderstood creatures, gentle and even intelligent by nature. They beg to keep the beloved pets, but the other colonists are worried things uh, might go south quickly if the pests are allowed to live. Nothing alarming here. Ah, uh, big brain science. Just a hobby, even if an odd one. The feeder seems ecstatic about the decision and promises to keep the rat beetles under control. As a thank you, they even share some insight on their ongoing research about insects. Regenerate. Regenerate. Re baby making capabilities. Nice. Wait, no. I think he means healing, actually, not necessarily uh, procreation. Hmm. Interesting. Down to three water now. Oh wait, do the farm fields take water? No, zero. Consumed in building zero. At least we're making more, though. More, uh, surplus is good, but that can be wiped out quickly, very quickly. Huh? Let's get another plus ten because I want to be prepared for a surprise winter or something, or whatever.
Okay, so now that means we got more science. We're at 285 then. Uh, yeah, I was saying ice fishing is good. We could get another slot for lumberjacks, which would be good, and only cost 75 after centralized repairs. Water pipes give us water tower. Frontier outpost, then shelving. Yeah, let's go with more lumberjacks. Oh, and then we can uh, actually, we need to get uh, metal scavenging unlocked too, although we don't even know where a pile is yet, but. go down this route first. Yep. Your commands. Not gonna work. Back to base. Open up another hospital just in case. Oh yeah, now we got somebody irradiated. Okay. All right, we're opening up more hospitals. Specialists ready for a oh, oh boy. Job done. Oh. Man, we should go grab that whip. Let's keep scouting. You got it. What you need? All done. Okay. We'll grab that medicine too. Damn, seven hundred still. Vert. I don't think I've heard of Vert before. Well, we need 700, so... Soon. You think we need a Roach Motel? Maybe. Will with the three months is a little raptor. It's been 84 years. Thanks, dude, for the three months. Feels like 84 years, I suppose. Thank you very much for your support, dude. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to all you. Well, well, well. Yeah, we have wells everywhere. We got a couple good wells. Actually, I wonder if... It would be kind of cool if you hovered over the water thing, if it showed you... If it highlighted the buildings. New member, welcome. I know we have a well... Yeah, right there. Oh, if you click one, it'll show you. Ooh, there's a wooden building there. Nice. That's a big find. Great. Oh, that's why the boars were there, actually. What's up? Actually, wait. We're going to need help clearing that out. That's why they're there. Never mind. Hundred and thirty eight there, but we're gonna need more scavengers here to clear them out. Music's cool, dude. Dude, I don't think I've had more fun playing this game than just right now. I've had so much fun playing this in the hardest difficulty, it's crazy cool. Yeah, we're clear-cutting the map. Looks like trees are growing back, though. Oh, yeah, bro, get out of there. Alright, so we got a couple people healing. That's good. Oh, the eyeballs for the filter for the resource? Oh, okay. Oh, that's how it works. Okay.
Well, actually, maybe maybe it's nice that it does do that, yeah, because... Honestly, hovering over every one of these things and seeing the screen change would be a little annoying. We've made a new discovery. And then now, please research... Nah, metal scavenging is probably a good way to go. We'll do lumberjacks later. Hey, we got more space in the hospitals. This guy is a scout. 8 AP. I feel like a scout's pretty good. Especially since they can travel across the map quickly, it helps to go gather, like, basic resources. And look at all that science there. What is that? Oh, that must be a heat wave or fallout. Wouldn't want to be there. Uh, can you fire specialists to employ others? Uh, I believe so. I think you can disband them. And then get more if you'd like. Or different ones. Got two farm fields going, so that's great. Oh, yeah, I forgot you can turn them into settlers for outposts. Yeah, that's another good reason to keep them. Hostiles defeated. Good job, bro. We won the battle. 52, yeah. This sorry band of raiders were clearly just a bunch of rookies. What they've done for others can't be for... What they've done for the others can't be for... Oh, I think it should say two. But they're clearly forced into the job. Is this how the world is now? 20 clothes? Whoa. Okay. Mission complete. Components. Where's the van? Get to the van. Wow, look at all the military tents and stuff out there, too. A little military camp. All right, let's bring everybody back to the camp. What my plan is, is to try to fight those boars near the woods so we can continue building and get the guys to drop off some of their stuff. And now we have another scout. Thanks for the payment. You won't regret this. The specialist grabs their gear and walks through the gate. Good. You can stay here, too. Good to have a scout. Especially at the start. Expensive scout? Yeah, true. But scouts are really good. Especially at the start. Ready. Uh-huh. Alright, looks like we're getting the healing taken care of. I think we should build another emergency shelter. I'm I'm sure another group will arrive. Soon. Of 
Good, good. Chat, in about 30 minutes, I got some big news to drop on you all. A first look at some big upcoming uh, new stuff I think you're going to like. Some Something big is about to happen in 30 minutes. It's going to be big. 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 That right, looks like we scouted out over here most of it. No, not quite, Will. Not yet. Oh, look at look at how look at the pollution there, man. An odd group is approaching the gate. Uh oh. figures is approaching the colony faithful finances a group of robed figures is approaching the colony their faces are hard to make out thanks to the hoods pulled tightly over their heads but their clothes have purple sun painted on them they stop by the gate pulling along trolleys of goods no need to be alarmed the leader calls and waves we're the sons of helios looking to trade the name rings no bells but it's safe to assume one of the numerous doomsday cults around the wasteland Plastic for clothing, plastic for parts, or pla uh, wood for metal, uh, medicine. Wood for medicine. Medicine would be good, but we're already gathering some. Clothing would be good. Yeah, look at his nails, bro. They're like talons. I think we'll go with... Mechanical parts? Clothing would be good for now, but we can make our own soon. And those are just basic clothes. If they were sturdy, I might rethink that, but... Parts can be a little bit of a pain to get, so let's go with the... Yeah, we're going with this one. Thank you, may Helios bless you all. Thank you, bro. Hinto, bless you. Your orders? Hinto, emote, bless you. Let's go take out these boars. Although they're going to attack in groups of two. We've made a new discovery. Hmm? Security. Uh huh. Yep. All right, so we can recruit another uh, settle, uh, another uh, specialist in four days. Sexy music chat. It's sexy like that lady with the red hair and the blue dress. You can pull up to her window late at night and... She'll slip you some tasty, juicy nugs. Oh yeah. Rip and dip, yeah, brother. What's up? Yes. Yep, they died to death. Yep. Yup. Yup. Nice. Okay, and did the world map clear? Yep. I 
not so much for that, but they can still bring back their stuff. And get healed up and stuff before we go to the last raid, which is down in the east. There? Yeah. We gotta raid that camp last. And there's antibiotics there. Ooh, a lot of them. 33. Good. Yep. Yeah, now we're bringing home the bacon, boys. The game's been really nice to us now. Not taking any chances, though, with the food and water. I want to make another storage tank. I would speed up the time, but we're playing on 200% difficulty, and so by doing that, we might miss something critical for our survival, and that could tank the entire camp. It's slow, but... I'm in no rush to die to death. Okay, getting a little light on the plastic. Oh, there's that beautiful fertile soil. Look at that, boys. Sexy. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, ma'am. That is some Kentucky bluegrass, man. Mm -hmm. That's so thick you're gonna have to mow it twice, girl. Oh yeah. I'm not, that's not any bull either. We're not talking Toro. That's gonna have to be a craftsman mower, brother, amen. No, X mark, precision mowers, brother, amen. Oh yeah. Sorry, my mic was on. All right, uh, let's see. We need some more wood, so we're getting it from this cabin. That's good. Oh, and a concrete ruin up there. Nice. Literally unplayable. Our scout thingy is a little off the ground. Unplayable. Buford T. Gamer in the chat. Hi, Bradford. Oh, everything's good for you today. Happy Saturday, Brad. The hell is that? Oh, no. Okay. What's up? Yeah. Oh, calling in all reinforcements. Our, everybody RTB. Bring it home, boys. Consider it done. Yes? Right away. I'm bringing in everyone for the final ultimate battle. You all thought it was the uh, moon exploding and the, all the nuclear wars that were the real threat. But what we didn't know was in our own backyard next to this cabin. He's got to go. He's got to go, boys. Sorry, Smokey, but your time is up. That's damn right. Oh boy. Ready. Oh Panda, you're here too? Good. How may I help? Shoot. How may I help? Yes. 
All right, let's kick it off. The final ultimate mega deluxe battle. Sending over everybody. The entire army. It's funny how you seem to find bears. No, bears find me. What do you mean? I was here first. I found, I found this seed. I spawned this seed this morning earlier before the bear got here. No, sir, bear. Don't put a smiley face in the chat. Sir. Bear. Okay. All right, we're sending in everybody. What's up, Alex? We good to see you back in the chat. Huh? All right, final battle against the bear. Let's go. Wow, he started it too. I was just hanging out. Kill it! Kill it before it lays eggs. All right, good. First try. The fresh remains of a huge bear. There's plenty of meat to harvest. Your orders. Good. Yes. Get rid of the evidence before reinforcements come. What's up? Whoa. Not cool, bro. Reporting in. All right, well, let's start disassembling those log uh -huh. cabins. And we're up over uh, almost 200 food. Not bad. And then this water here, or this, uh, yeah, this, this means we can make a pretty nice well over here, too. Ooh, with eight, eight water, 97% efficiency. Building that there. Hell yeah. Plus eight water. Hell yeah. Oh, it looks like we took damage. A little tiny bit of damage. damage. What is that? Oh, the well. Not bad. All right, the big old bad bear battle is over. With a huh? big o win for us. Yeah, it looks like it might be a good idea to have two full time medical tents now. Wait, is our burner? No, that's fine. Is this how XCOM starts? Men drop it in? Yeah. Wait, aren't you aren't you a thin man? Drop it in there, Buford. Drop it in the chat. Yeah, we need some more research now, too. We got 60. Well, at least we can salvage metal whenever we find a uh, concrete ruin there, but that's not great. One. Ah, there's metal, finally. Okay, so we can start scab. Oh, and look at that. Plastic and metal. Nice. So the recycler has a spot to expand to. And more wood ruins there, too. Alright, let's build a scavenger building for that. What's it called? The uh, scrapper, I think it is. Yeah. Makes sense. Chat, about 15 minutes to the big O secret reveal. I got a big surprise for everybody in the chat in about uh, 15, less than 15 minutes. It's big. It's going to be big. All right, clothes and tools. We need clothes and tools. Did everybody drop off their stuff? They did, didn't they? Huh? Didn't she 
Didn't she grab clothing from here? How may I help? Huh? I think she has clothing in, in the inventory, but it doesn't show it. What's the surprise? Uh, you'll be surprised at how surprising it is. What you need? You'll be taken by a surprise. Shoot. What is that? Oh, the scrapper. Oh, cool. We can have them build it. Nice. Your command. I forgot they could build too. Surprisingly. Alright, the game is being suspiciously nice to us. We haven't been hit by anything weird for a little while. Sixty-nine, nice. Fish, and then fifty-seven meat. Hundred and ten berries, and then we've got some corn and potatoes coming in. We have a storage capacity of eighteen hundred water. Watching Hearts of Iron videos while I watch the stream. Ah, uh, yeah, we'll we'll play that sometime, Buford. I know you want to. I'm just gonna keep building those water storage. It's a good idea just to have more than we need. Especially since certain things might double consumption, so we can go from like 24 to 48, and then with 39 being our current uh, production. Actually, wait, shouldn't it be more? Oh yeah, it'll be more once this gets built. By eight, I think? Seven, maybe. Your orders. And yeah, nice to see all the specialists working at the camp too. All right, so once they're done salvaging a lot of this stuff, we'll put them back in the van, or at least we can take Panda out of here, I think. Send him on the way to go take out the last bandit camp, and that'll be one of the first objectives out of the way. In fact, let's send you to the world map now. Let's show some hustle. That's right. Yeah, our capacity is at uh, 16, 1,800. We have 1,600 now in storage. So we're just improving it even more. I'm getting you all hopped up. Yeah, with the knowledge that the big O reveal is in 10 minutes. Uh, I saw Beady Boy on a dev stream a week or two ago for Hunt Showdown. Cool dude. Yeah, he actually said he was watching us play. He said he was watching our live streams. He sent a DM and he was like, hey, good job today. And I was like, oh, cool dude. What you need? He's, a ni he's a very nice guy. Very cool. I think he's at, he might be at TwitchCon right now. But Hunt, Hunt Showdown's amazing. And so is their uh, creative team and their um, community team. Or PR, whatever you call it. Social media. It's cool stuff. Alright, so now, unfortunately, Panda's going to have to scout out that area before he goes to war. I can't believe it bears again. Panda bear too? Would it not be cool if at the end of the game you would make contact with a colony on Mars? That would be cool. Is that is that is that an ending where you actually find out there's humans on Mars too? Like we successfully populated Mars, but then things on Earth didn't go. Didn't go uh, according to plan. All 
All right, well, we need tools, and the good news is we're making a metal scavenger now. Scrapper. How do we research clothing making? There. Handicraft. Which gives us the tool shop and the tailor. Ooh, a two-in-one deal. Okay, that's cool. So that'll be our next research, and that'll be our next uh, order of business. Let's listen to another radio station. Let's do Outback. Yep, this is right on the edge, so we got to scout out the uh, map, the region. We have bandits at the gate. Bandits again? Uh oh. Uh oh. A large group of refugees have gathered outside the gate. They look extremely malnourished and their eyes sheen with quiet desperation. These bandits took us hostage. They sent us out to gather resources. If we don't bring back anything, they'll kill our families. Please. One of them pleads, the group is large and taking them down by force would be very hard. Uh, back to colony view, please. Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you out, sir. Yep. Hopefully we can, uh, I don't want to fight them. I want to try to help them. We're going to try to bring back that, uh, lady. Otherwise we're going to have to go to war. They might be lying after all, but I don't think so. I think if we give them medicine, we get currency in return. And that's super powerful for more scouts on the map. How many hours do I have in Hearts of Iron? Um, not many. I know a bit about the game, but I'm no expert or anything. It's a lot of fun, though. Okay, we need more. Ask Buford. Buford's got, like, what? Like, Buford's got 2,000 hours in... Uh, Payday 2 and... Parts of iron, and probably at this point he's got um, 2,000 in Hutch Showdown. Okay, as soon as this fills up, we should be able to bring her back. I want to avoid conflict if I can. Let's feel more like it's more challenging. Give them stuff that should be ours. They need how much? 20. We'll have exactly that when our scout comes back. <laughs> Bradford puts on games and goes to sleep, yeah. Yeah, we played uh, Hearts of Iron before on the channel. It was a lot of fun. I, I can't remember exactly what I did, but... I've done some sponsored videos and stuff for them, too. That's cool. Cool, she's back at base. Uh, she uh -huh. should... Ma'am, didn't you bring back the 20 medicine? I think it's at the gate. Oh, there it is. 
Now we just need somebody to carry that Your over. Oh, co oh, come on. It's sitting right there. Yeah, Victoria 3 looks incredible. That's going to be amazing. It's like Anno meets... Uh... Oh, again? Come on, we got like two two couriers available. Let's go. Oh, uh, we're gonna have to go to war because somebody wouldn't. Oh, come on. That's just sitting there. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to assume then that these people were lying. What's up? Well, that, that was fast. Uh, we did it, yeah. Damn it. Well, we made money. And a little bit of, uh, tools, so I guess that worked out. What's up? Yes? Oops. All because the supplies were sitting right there. Oh, now they're in the storage, aren't they? Yep, now it's there. Just... Okay, whatever. It's fine. They may they may come back. Not going to happen. Sounds good. All right, Panda's gonna scout out then attack. All right. And let's send everybody to the world map. What you need? Or at least the scouts, I think. Yes. How may I help? Your command. Ready. Yep. But Raj can go and help at the, uh, the wood piles. Hey! Jerk. I don't know you, that's my purse. Sure thing. Yes. Sounds good. Your orders going. Well, I don't know if those people were telling the truth or not, but truth be told, at least we survived. Oh, I have to give a name to my save? Uh, we'll do nah for new alliance. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, now we're making bacon. That's right. Now we're making bacon. Good times. All right, surprise, surprise, folks. Manor Lords. As a free way to play it, you have to apply for a test, and uh, there's some really big developments on that game that just came out about a week ago that I've been meaning to cover, and now today is the day. So I'm going to send you live over to our first look at the new changes for Manor Lords for 2022 and talk a little bit about some of the things uh, coming to the game and um, its eventual release date, which uh, is unknown at the time, but used to be this year, but it's now going back in the uh, the hopper till we know more. So anyway, I'm going to send you on over to that video, and we'll be live maybe a little earlier with our stream of uh, Arcade Paradise. So that way I can uh, stream that a little bit earlier and then maybe make some other videos for you all. Keep in mind, I'm going to be uh, st uh, streaming maybe not, not on Monday, maybe after Monday because my uh, internet provider is upgrading the uh, system. So I'm going to be shutting some things down. But anyway... Thank you to all you guys for being here. Thank you very much for leaving a like. Hang out here in the chat, and I'll redirect you to our next video. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. Hang out in the chat, and make sure you hit the pop-up that might pop up in the chat that says, Hey, Raptors viewers are going here. Check it out. So be ready, all. It's coming. Here we go. The next big video.